Raiders, my friends, sorry, would you believe me if I told you that I just ran around looking for a pencil and I came back and whoa, a raid, whoa, <laughs> hey y'all, give me just a few seconds and I will thank y'all properly, but Izzy, thank you for the raid, I hope you had a wonderful stream and welcome on in Raiders, we're getting ready to play 999, just give me a few more seconds to catch my breath and get settled in. And we can begin the nightmares, not the nightmares, the fun, the fun nightmares. Is that different? Anyway, I'll see you in just a sec, okay? Let's try that again, shall we? Hiya! Hello, 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 hello! Hey, y'all! Happy Frog Friday! And hey! Welcome to the stream! Once again, thank you, Izzy. Izzy Bell Beeps for the raid. Let me bring it. Let me just ugh, shake my, my mic piece around. Hi, Meg! How are you? Welcome on in, raiders! And thank you for the follows as well! For folks who are new, my name is Katie Dits, you can call me Katie. I'm an illustrator, I'm a VTuber, and I like to play video games, and I'm looking forward to this one, because folks like Chaco Show! Ryan! Ryan, you love this game! Hi, Ryan, and hello, Insider! So many of my friends have boarded Gushikochi's Mean Bean Machine, the Brain Scrambler, the Mind Melder, the Twister of Fates and Perspectives. It has numbers, it has mysteries, it has murder. Great, right, thank you. Thank you for gifting us Sophie. Sophie, Subby, rule zero. We don't say things correctly around here, but yes. Today, I, in honor of the Halloween spirit, figured now would be the best time to get on board. I've been meaning to, I've been on the fence 
you know, I've talked about in the past how, you know, there are some graphic depictions, there are some graphic descriptions. I don't think we, like, visually get to see too, too much, if anything, but they get graphic. <laughs> Time to learn how to count to nine, Kitty the Frog Jam. One. Two. <laughs> thank you so much for the sub and kicking off a freaking hype train. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm doing great. I'm doing it. I'm counting. Uh, like I said, when I briefly popped in, I was running around because I, I thought I had all of my equipment ready. Uh, I have a little notebook. I have a pencil that I went and ran and grabbed. And I have my phone. If they don't, don't tell me if they have tools in the game for me to, to fool around with. But I also made sure I have my phone ready if I need a calculator. Because, oh boy, there's nine of them. There's nine hours. There's nine persons. There's nine doors. And, you know, we probably aren't going to be streaming for nine hours, but I want to be, I want to start streaming this a good, a good bit. Like, wrap up inscription and start kind of letting this, this whole shenanigan, chicanery, chicanery? Is that really apt? I don't know. We'll find out. Don't tell me. <laughs> um, really quick, make sure y'all are familiar with the rules. It's nothing too crazy. You know, be civil, be kind, all that good stuff. Normally, we stream for 16+, plus, but I feel like this stream in particular, and I, I feel like a lot of my streams in particular are featuring games that are just... Really, really graphic. So hey, mature audience warning. Make sure you are familiar with the CWs if you are not familiar or you just maybe you forgot what happens in this game. Who knows? Wow! Thank you for gifting another sub, Ray! Thank you, thank you! You're always so generous. Nine, nine, nine. Nine Katies, nine frogs, nine murders. Will they all be done? <laughs> hey, listen. Katie did, Katie didn't. What is the truth? <laughs> Can I draw you? Yes! We do have a fan art tag called Artsy Dids. It is the same as my name, but just Artsy. Let me see if the command works. Exclamation point art. There you go. Usually I like to see them on Twitter at the end of stream. I, I'm actually gonna remember to try to check today because I've, I've made a poor habit of checking in on the fan art because I also have been just kind of streaming very sporadically. So, you know, I don't really expect anybody to jump on the gun, but this time I'll be sure to check. Yay! You think this is bad, this chicanery? <laughs> oh my goodness, welcome on into the stream, y'all. Is there anything else I could say? Um. Oh yeah, if you saw on Twitter, uh, I believe I shared, no. Actually, I don't think I shared the news on Twitter. I think, pff, I think I only shared that my AC broke, but the AC's fixed now. So, yippee, I'm not gonna boil alive this stream. It's gonna be awesome. It was like something got misaligned. So the, like, you know how there's like a little bit of humidity that turns to water and it's like usually nothing? It became not nothing, it became uh, a, a considerable amount of water. Uh-oh. So, good thing we caught that before it became, like, really bad. So, anyway. I'm chilling. It's cozy. It's fall. It's not too hot. I'm, I'm prepared for, for the fluctuation. You know how spring kind of gets wacky? It doesn't know what it wants to do. Fall kind of does the same thing. Though I feel like it doesn't really get discussed as much. You know? Fall is here, though. Yes. I'm seeing the leaves outside. I, I feel like today's the first day I was like, oh yeah, it's fall. Yay, you're here, you're here, you're here. You know what, since you are here, I might as well go ahead and get on started. I'm gonna start moving around windows, start getting y'all settled in. We're gonna get ready to play. 999, I guess the one thing I did forget to mention is hey, if you wanna support the stream, you're already doing the best methods of support. There are always tips, bits, and subs, which, hey, y'all are seriously, thank you so much for the, for the hype train, y'all. I super appreciate it, especially after, like, the funky little, the funky little week, you know, tons of little bits and baubles and things breaking apart. Every little bit counts. Seriously, thank y'all. Uh, let me make sure I can see this if I need to. I also have the audio over here. <laughs> we love funky weeks. We love funky positive weeks. This is, like, funky weird <laughs> you know what i mean but speaking of weird 
I'm gonna go over here, gonna make sure it returns. Yes! Welcome to nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. The first of many entries in the Zero Escape series. I probably have somehow been spoiled on this at some point, but thank God I can't remember shit. So let's double check our options really quick. <laughs> Um, I kind of fiddled around with it a little bit, but let me know how it is. I think, like, the music is good. Nine fonts. <laughs> Let's see. But I have, like, music kind of around middle. Sound effects a little louder than that. And then we've got, we've got a voice, which the only, the only voice line I have to gauge whether or not it's good is... The nonary game, nonary game, the nonary game, the nonary game. 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 Ooh. Uchi Koji moment! I'm Mar! How are you? Oh, the Mar and Ryan fan club moments. Let's go! <laughs> the nonary game. How, how, how does the nonary game sound to y'all? Is the voice good around like this third, like third bubble? Two, two empty bubbles? I believe- I think it's good. You've chilled it with the VA for some main character- Oh! You've chilled with the VA of the main character and he does an awesome job? I'm excited! I've heard good things about the voice work. The nonary game. 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 It's adequately nonary. Wow! Thank you for gifting us out to Burp! Thank you, thank you! Uchikochi moment. Uchikochi moment's probably gonna be the raid phrase, right? I imagine so. Is the music louder than the dialogue in Katie? Let me know! Let me know, let me know! I'm, I'm talking, I'm yelling. I think on my end it looks like I'm, I'm above the music. You're cleaning, but I can't wait to see you play this. I hope you're having a good time cleaning! Uh, yippee! Let's see. The game could be a little quieter, like overall. Let me see. If I click out here, it's gonna suddenly cut. But don't be scared, chat. Don't be scared. It's suddenly so quiet. Don't be scared. I'm just gonna, on my end, do the manual volume mixer. Turn it down one. Don't worry. It's like any time I click out of the game, it'll do that. So don't worry. <laughs> that that just means I've exited Ushikoshi's realm for a moment. <laughs> But I turn it down like one click. If I don't like manually click it, uh, it'll start going a bit far. Have a good look, Ryan. Uh, I also need to make sure that these also get uploaded on a good on a good time frame. Maybe I could also do the nonary game. And then here, maybe around here, maybe. Worst comes to worst, I can always adjust it, keep an eye on it, also listen back to the recording. It is what it is. We're mostly just here for numbars. So, without further ado, with your blessings, I think we're ready to start. Let's see what happens with numbers. Numbers, 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 numbers. Creating save data. Please select. Um. I mean, what is it? Just... This way and this way? Yeah, okay, well. Oh, one of 30, okay. Are you sure you wanna save here? Yeah, I hope, I hope that's okay. I have now been cursed with the number one. Hi, Ellie! You've never heard of this game before in my life, so the fact that a lot of folks are excited to see you play it makes me excited to see you play it. Oh wait, there are two modes of play. And they could be interchanged. I think I saw that. We're on a boat. I assume. Nine. Eight. Seven. Yeah, that's a boat. The numbers. Six. Five. Four. Ooh, I might actually need to fix the window. I can't tell. I might fix that in a minute. Three, two, one, zero. These are important. A 
loud noise started started startled. I assume this is the interchange thing. Here's menu. A loud noise startled Junpei awake, and his eyes snapped open. What? What the? What the? As they adjusted to the light, he realized that he didn't recognize the surroundings. Oh no! With a crack, Junpei's head connected with something metal. He rolled over and threw out his hand to steady himself, but he found himself groping at empty air. What? Whoa! His balance lost and his still fuzzy mind struggling to understand what was going on, Junpei tumbled down to the cold gray floor. Ouch! God damn it! Adventure ah, screen! What the hell? Okay, this is the adventure screen, I assume. Hang on, I wonder something. We're gonna go to the quiet realm for a second, okay? There's just something that's bothering me. There's just something that's bothering me so much. Do, do, do. We're doing it live. Da, 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 da. It likes to snap, but I don't want it to do that. Oh well. Hopefully it's not a big deal. <laughs> Me freaking out on the screen as I'm just like, wah, wah, wah. There we go. Okay. Thank you for entertaining me with my silly nonsense. That just black that little black bar was bothering me. Back to video game rumble tumble time. What the hell? A bed? Can I click it at will? A three-level bunk bed, in fact. Junpei had fallen apparently to the topmost or from the f not upwards, from the topmost bunk. <sighs> I fell pretty far. I'm kind of interested in novel mode for the first run and then letting it play really out slower hurt. naturally. His shoulder hurt, his knee hurt, his hip hurt, his entire body hurt. He could feel a bump forming on his forehead where he'd slammed it against the low ceiling. Damn, my eyesight's kind of blurry. Must have hit my head. No, wait. That's not it. At first, he thought the tremor that ran through his legs was just another effect of his rude awakening, but as he looked around, he realized it was real. The whole room was shaking. An earthquake! But it, it's shaking too fast for that. Then again, Junpei had no idea what it was, if not an earthquake. Uh, anyway... Junpei rubbed the growing bump on his head and gingerly climbed to his feet. His balance regained, he finally took his first good look around the room and muttered to himself, Where am I? His pain momentarily forgotten in the fa- Oh, it did continued. Minutes passed while June Page struggled to, to get his bearings. Hang on, is there a way to like... There's flow. There's save. The flow chart. Don't look at that. Minutes passed while Junpei struggled to get his bearings. Then, as suddenly as they had begun, the tremor ceased. Wait, it... it stopped? A cold silence fell over the room. From somewhere far away, Junpei could hear the sound of metal squeaking. What's that sound? In an attempt to distract himself, Junpei looked around the room once more. There was a stove that looked more antique than functional. The three-level bunk bed had mattresses that were so thin that they were little more than blankets. On the other side of the room was an identical bed, and set in the wall between the beds was a slightly dirty iron door. Ooh, hang on. There's... The number five, and there's a blue suitcase. That's... The first thing Junpei noticed about the door was the number roughly emblazoned across it. On the surface of the door, in red paint, someone had written... Five. Five? Brackets. What's this five mean? Suspicious and still utterly confused, Junpei approached the door slowly. Standing at last in front of the door, Junpei grabbed hold of the L-shaped handle. A push yielded no movement, and a pull, the same result. Ah, it won't open. Let me jingle this. Let me jiggle this. It didn't matter how much he pushed and shoved. The handle wouldn't budge. 
Next to the door was an odd-looking device that reminded Junpei of a card reader. What's this? Is this keeping the door shut? Junpei knocked hard on the door. Bang! Bang! Hey! Hello? Is anyone there? Open the door! Please! Please! Let me out! There was no response. <sighs> Junpei threw his left fist into the door. And stopped. Huh? What the hell is this? He wasn't really sure what else to say. Oh. On his left wrist was a bracelet of a sort he'd never seen before. In the center was a large LCD display. A watch? It doesn't look like one. Five. Five. This time with parentheses. No, not parentheses. A different bracket. I'm silly. This is... This is... Uh, an ill omen for how this game will go. Who <laughs> smiles? That's, that's the same as the door. True, the numbers were the same, but he had no idea what that might mean. All he knew was that it was strange and new, and he wanted it off. Junpei flipped his hand over as if to remove a watch, but... What? How do I take this off? Oh, parentheses was correct. The self-doubt got in my heart. No, that's an S. Oh, my bad. The other side of the bracelet was solid. No buckle, no clasp, nothing. He sighed and flipped the thing back over. There was a number of rivets around the rim of the face. Perhaps... Maybe pushing something on this will work? He pushed them, but nothing happened. On a watch, they might be dials for adjusting date or time, but on this bra... bra, 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 bra rule zero. Bra, I, I can't say bracelet correctly. On this bracelet, they did nothing. Nothing. Damn. Guess I'll have to force it off. Growing more desperate, he began to tug at it. However... <clears throat> don't hurt yourself! No good. This stupid thing won't come off. A steel ring rang from the face, around Junpei's wrist, and back into the face. He wouldn't be pulling the bracelet off any time in the near future. Did I say rang? I meant ran. It ran around the face. What the hell is the deal with this thing? Frustration and desperation were beginning to mix as the reality of the situation began to dawn fully on Junpei. So much was happening, and none of it made sense. Junpei felt as though he were about to explode. Where am I? And why the hell am I here? Side note, that thing has a red and a blue thing on it. I should probably remember that. Why? For when things start going bad in here. What the hell happened to me? Where am I? <laughs> ah, my head. I'm sensitive to images. Pain bloomed, but he did his best to shake it off. He raised his head. Huh. Oh. It was at that moment that he noticed the window. This is... The window was round, rimmed in riveted brass, like a window from an early 20th century ship. Hold on. Am I on a ship? Junpei walked slowly toward the window. He could see nothing beyond it but thick, impenetrable darkness. I can't see anything. If only it wasn't so dark outside. Junpei squinted, trying to see something. Anything. It was at that moment. Oh, huh? oh get away from there! Oh, wait, wait, wait! Oh, oh, you gotta be kidding me. What the... What the hell is going on here? Um, guys, you might want to see this. A crack split the glass of the window, and for a moment, Junpei stared at it. Then the window burst, and water began to pour into the room. What the hell? God damn it! <laughs> oh, man. Junpei yelled and spun around. His feet slipping on the water already coming through the window, he ran for the door. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me hey, out! Anyone! Is anyone there? Come on, if you're there, say something! This bath time, don't worry, I'm worrying! There was no reply. As Junpei screamed and pounded on the door, the water began to rise. It was now ankle deep on the floor and rising quickly towards his knees. It's, it's not stopping. Not good, not good at all, okay. I need to find a way out and fast. 
Junpei ran a hand across his forehead, brushing the sweat out of his eyes, and looked around the room. You're telling me I gotta do puzzles when water's coming in this fast? I blinked and it's up to my ankles! I'm gonna do my best, I guess! Third class cabin. Uh, I'm currently looking there. And then there's the beds. Okay. Operations during an escape. During an escape, you are restricted to an area. Your goal is- your goal? Search around to uncover how to unlock the door. Seek a gay trout! Oh, I'm looking. There are items and hints in the room that will help you escape. Click on a location you find suspicious to search the room. Use Q or E to move around the room. Okay, well, what's this? Show me- show me this. About items. Once you've obtained an item, you'll be able to go to the item screen. Clicking item on the top left will take you to the item screen. I can rotate? I can rotate in my mind? Oh, what did it say for this? The notes got triangle triangle in red and triangle triangle in blue. Okay. Okay, and then I can combine stuff too. Investigate with an item. The item visible in the lower left is the item currently in hand. When you close the item screen, the last selected item will be in hand. If you hold an item while investigating your room, you may trigger a reaction. Try switching out items in hand and search different places. Click the item icon or press V to quickly change between items. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember that. Ooh, and doing that does this. Cool! Um, I don't think that there's anything else immediately right here. This thing. Uh... No dice. It's locked tight. Let's see if there's anything in the keyhole. Numbers. The number on the dial is 0101. I guess I need to put the key in the keyhole before I can enter any numbers on the dial. Doesn't look like I'm going to be able to force it open. I should probably start looking for a key. Alright, let's go back. Uh, anything in here? This is the door to the stove. Well, it opens easily enough. Sure wish the door to get out of here was that easy to open. A screwdriver? Well, that solves the mystery of whether or not this stove has been used before. What's this? It looks red. Screwdriver! Awesome. Normal screwdriver. Doesn't seem to be any- doesn't seem to be anything special about it. Okay, anything in the teapot? A key! Well, let's see if there's anything in here. I love key tea! Huh, looks like there is... a key? Yeah, there's a little blue key in the bottom of this pot. Odd. Small key. This key's pretty small. Definitely not for a door. What's it for then? The key blue the key's blue. Is it supposed to open something else that's blue? Like the suitcase? I'm gonna keep looking though, before I get on with the suitcase. Cause I haven't seen the other uh bed. Ugh. Hang on, can I? All I can see from here is the underside of the top bunk. It's pretty high up there. Uh, man, it's a pretty poor excuse for a bed. There's barely any space between the bed and the ceiling. I don't think I'd even have enough space to turn over. I bet money this was for poorer passengers or maybe the ship's crew. I've gotta die someday, but I sure as hell don't wanna be here. Uh, oh, I accidentally clicked out of the game. Oop, sorry, jump scare. I've got it. If I pull off these these sheets and shove them into the window, maybe that'll stop the water. All right, window, let's see how you like this. Shoot, that's not gonna happen. There's way too much water coming through there. This is me trying to fix my AC. Just all the water coming in. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> no way these sheets are going to be enough to plug up that window. I guess there's only one way I'm gonna live through this. And that's by getting the hell out of this room. After all, there's not really anything else I can do. What's this? Oh! Another key! A red one this time. A small red key. Okay. I should probably hold on to this key. Yes. Please do. Uh. Is this a mirror? Hey! What's up with my face? You look kinda rough, buddy. I look like a zombie. Yeah. What happened? Man, what the hell happened to me? Oh, right. Gotta remember to do that. How did I end up here? He's so tired, let him sleep. A goblin myself. Um Despite despite how scared and 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 unconfident I am, I am feeling pretty brave for still trying to do my best in this scenario. I'm like I'm like 
I try to emulate Luigi in these times, and that makes me feel better about life. <laughs> I left work, headed back to my apartment, and... 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 Even as he said it, something in his mind opened, and a memory bobbed to the surface. It was the last thing Junpei remembered before waking up in the strange room. It was past midnight when he came home. Junpei shuffled up the stairs and opened the door to apartment 201. Inside was his apartment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking about how I said that for... It was past midnight when he came home. <laughs> I'm a silly little goose. Inside was his apartment. <laughs> a small one-bedroom affair that ran him about 630 a month. Dang. He moved into it when he entered college, and so far he'd been there for three years and seven months. Dang! Hold on. Hang on, gang. Let me just take a second to put things into perspective. Um, because I also have a calculator on my phone. Uh, how, how much is, like, so that's three times twelve, uh, plus seven, forty-three months times... 630, uh, oop, hit it, a thing, oh man, oh, that's a lot of money, in New York, this would be 10k a week, uh, uh, I hate, uh, something needs to change, I'm back, not like anyone will respond, welcome home, Junpei, oh! <laughs> he stepped inside and turned on the lights, the fluorescent lights on the ceiling blinked and flickered slowly to life, as if uh, as if waking from a deep slumber. Oh, man, work was rough today. Their cold light illuminated the landscape he'd come home to so many times before. Everything was as he'd left it. The magazines piled up in the corner, the textbooks collecting dust, the CD cases covering the floor. Get, get a shelf for those! You're gonna step on a CD! What are you doing? The jeans and t-shirt he'd worn the day before, then tossed onto the floor. There was one thing that didn't belong, however. Huh? A breeze? You didn't leave the window open, did you? The white curtain framing his windows just swayed gently in the cold wind. Huh, that, that's weird. Did I leave that open? Junpei walked toward the window, trying to remember if he'd closed it or not before he left. One of the panes was hanging open. He stuck his head out and looked around. Hmm, everything looks okay. He's gonna be... He's right behind me, isn't he? I must have forgotten to close it. He's right behind me, isn't he? He closed the window. Then it happened. Ah! <laughs> Junpei turned and found himself face to mask with a man dressed all in black. The man wore a deep hood and a bulky gas mask. His face was entirely hidden. Who were- Suddenly, he couldn't finish. Junpei tried to yell, but all he could manage was a strangled croak. I- I can't- Junpei collapsed to the floor, a crumpled heap of limbs like a discarded puppet. Too late, he noticed the white smoke that was quickly filling his apartment. A small object, shaped distressingly like a grenade, sat on the floor in front of his face, hissing. The white smoke poured out of it at an incredible wake. He's just getting blasted in the face with knockout gas. He's like, oh, might as well just speed this up. This shit sucks. Might as well get it over with. <laughs> the smoke had grown so thick that the details of Junpei's apartment began to fade in the white haze. He could feel his mind begin to fade as well, a white haze that was not the smoke creeping into the edges of his vision. Consider this a privilege. You have been chosen. A rasping voice wormed its way out of the gas mask. It was cold and harsh and distorted in some way Junpei couldn't put his finger on. You are going to participate in the game. Yeah, good thing there's captions. Hang on, I'm gonna close my eyes and see if I can, like, uh, well, I mean, hang on. So that, so that you believe me, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, 
Oh. Good thing I know that does that now. Anyway. I just wanna I just wanna I just wanna see if I can hear it. The memory game. It is a game where you will put your life on the line. It is a game where you are gonna put your life on the line? Oh. Like, I'm sure there are some words that just get completely lost. Anyway, video! Gotta, gotta, it's like I'm taking peeks at the minute. Oh, never mind. We gotta do it again. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Flashbang every time we go back to this, to this, to this, uh, <laughs> menu. Um. Sure, man. <laughs> no way they're gonna guess nonary. Oh. That was the last thing Junpei remembered. The white smoke overpowered him. The masked man fable, fade, fabled, faded from his vision, and he felt his consciousness fall away into the white mist. That's right. That guy with the gas mask. With the gas. That son of a bitch must have taken me here. That gassy bitch. When I get my hands on him... He grounded his teeth in frustration and strained to remember anything about his attacker's figure. Well, I, I guess there's no way to know if that was a man or not. Girl boss! Uh, the voice had been cold and mechanical, likely passed through a voice changer, and the body had been covered in a thick cloak. Just who was that? They said, you have been chosen. <laughs> Jupe is so progressive. <laughs> You've been chosen. It's a privilege. Get gassed. What it might mean, that was beyond him. What the hell is going on? Why me? You have chosen, or have been chosen. There was only one thing from his memory that seemed important. You are going to participate in the game. The memory game. It is a game where you will put your life on the line. The nonary game. Huh. The nonary game. I feel like if I, if, like, I didn't already hear the nonary game, like, or see the nonary game, like, I feel like this is called the nonary games, uh, as, like, a group. What the hell is a nonary game? Ugh, God damn it! Don't try this at home, everyone. Don't play a game where you put your wife on the line. Help! I'm on the line, give me off! Hey! Punch the window. Oh, no, actually, don't do that. Also, it's a mirror, silly me. With a yell, Junpei drove his fist into the mirror. Oh, right, I'm drowning. There's nothing left on the mirror. Okay, um... Is there... I can't bring myself to call this a bed. It feels like a board with a sheet on it. It's pretty flat. Anything under the pillow? Ooh, memo from bed. The notes got square, triangle, and blue, and triangle, square, and red. It's an arrow that goes all the way across the paper. It's red under the it's it's red under the red symbols and blue under the blue ones. Can I combine them? No, but. Hmm. I need to figure out what the symbols mean before I jump to any conclusions. Uh, I can't reach this bunk. Might as well look through it. Huh. Damn. Nothing here. Where's... I'm looking for red. Anything else? A bulletin board. There's nothing on it. Picture frame. Uh, search? An old picture frame. There's a picture of a ship in it. There's screws keeping the back on. Oh, uh, ooh! Combine with screwdriver. Well, the screwdriver got those screws off easily enough. And here's the picture. Picture of a cruise liner. Is there a code? There's a key! Okay. One, two... Hold... This is the part where I'm getting my pen and pencil. Or not pe like pen and pencil, but book and pencil. I'm I'm double wielding. Okay. So 
So this one is seven. I'm just going for the triangles on the piece of paper and seeing if I'm right. Four. Because if, if it's separated like that, like, and mirrored on each side, maybe, like, the red parts go together and then, like, the blue parts go together? I'm just kind of keeping them together by color and seeing what happens. So this one is seven, four, eight, five. And then the other one would be zero, uh, two, and then six, and then three. There. And then they list off the, the numbers one through zero. Welcome! <laughs> she ate my pencil! <laughs> so someone wrote a bunch of numbers and symbols on the back of the picture, huh? Can I combine it with this and get a reaction? Okay, well, let's go back. Maybe we'll figure out what this means later. Combining items? Let's so combine the item to, to combine two items. You'll receive a new item. If they cannot, then nothing will happen. Try out different combinations of items you find in your search. Um. Right. Let's do this. Let's see what happens if I put the blue key in the keyhole. And nothing. I guess I'm gonna need some sort of code for the dial. Mini games. During an escape, your investigation may trigger one of the several mini games. All operations for the mini games are done by clicking the screen. Some mini games will require you to manipulate something, while others will only require you to apply the right object or click the right thing. Operation instructions. Clicking the dial will cause it to move to the next number. Enter four numbers this way and then click the key. If the numbers are correct, it will unlock. Well... Oh shoot. Hang on. I don't even remember which one is my blue code. If I have anything, it might give me some sort of hint. If I put the if I put in the right numbers and turn the key, then it should open. Can I look at it from menu? Oh no, I can do item. Okay, so I want the square code. Okay. The right four numbers. So we're gonna do zero, two, six, three. Yay! <laughs> I did it! <laughs> All right, let's see if these numbers work. A turn of the key and hey, look, looks like it's working. Yes. All right, let's open it up. What's it? The red, that's where it is. Yes, it opened. Looks like there's something in here. What is this? A file? File screen. If you find any documents or notes during an escape, the information contained in them will be available on the file screen. Press arrow to open the file screen. All right, let's see what's in this file. Hmm, digital root. Let's see here. Oh, they're gonna read it with me. Compute a digital root with the following steps. First, add all the numbers in question to one another. If you end up with something greater than a single digit number, add the digits to one another. For instance, if you have a double digit number, add the number in the tens place to the number in the ones place. Keep adding digits in this manner until you have a single digit answer. That final single digit is your digital root. Example, the digital root of 678 would be 6 plus 7 plus 8 equals 21. 2 plus 1 equals 3. Therefore, the digital root of 678 is 3. Example, the digital root of 1234 would be 1 plus 2 plus 3, da, 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 da. okay. Therefore, the digital root is 1. I see. So I just keep adding numbers until I get a single digit number. Oh, looks like there's something on the back of this thing. A notebook, a pen, a calculator. Hey, they, they gave it to me in fiction. And a stack of key cards, huh? Stack of blue key cards. Looks like some key cards. There's a number written on each card. Ooh, you know what I should do really quick while I'm here? I'm gonna label these lists I have as red only and blue only. 
in case I need to do more stuff with numbers. I need to keep track. There's a number written on each card. Six, seven, eight. Does that mean something? Uh, were those the only ones I got? Do I get any reaction looking at this? No. Okay. What about this? Just out of curiosity. Not yet. Okay. New material has been added to the file screen. Calculator. Press left to open the calculator screen. The calculator can also calculate a digital route, which will be important to the progression of the story. This is so important, gang. Everyone would have been better at math if the teacher had told kids that math would be used in Zero Escape, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Indoors. I wonder actually like how many people who may have come across this game just so happen to like get like really excited. Like they discover they actually kind of love math and, and stuff. That'd be fun. Important to the progression of the story. Okay, so write for files about digital roots. The file Junpei found. I'm drowning. Uh, controls during the escape. Okay, if I ever forget, I just need to come back here. Uh, was it enter space, speed up? Da da do, da da do. Bird's eye view, click map. Okay. Um, anything else in here that I really need? Oh, they got tips in here. I'm gonna try not to look at the tips. I'm gonna try to be, try not to get too, too much information at once. Um, all right. So, I can't see the bottom of the ladder. Oh man, the water's already up to the bottom of the bed. I've gotta hurry this up. We're moving in bullet time. Blue briefcase. Uh, is there... I can't, I can keep looking till the cows come home. I'm gonna find up here is that pillow, darn it. Is there anything else I can use? Sorry, I'm just double checking. Oh, a dressing room. There you are. I just realized this was a curtain. Come here. This is just like the blue briefcase. Yep, there's a lock on this one too and it's not opening. Uh, here we go, small key. Let's stick that red key in there. It's not opening. In fact, it's not doing anything at all. Well, all right, I take it back. I guess I can move the dial now. So it looks like I'm gonna have to put in the right numbers and then turn the key. I do that, this thing should pop right open. Let's give it a shot. So in this case, it would be the red number seven, four. Thank you for the follow. Enjoy your stay. I love puzzles. Yes, I unlocked it. It's opening. Numbers, numbers, numbers. These look like key cards. There's a number on each one. One, two, three. Okay, so. Red, one, two, three. Blue, six, seven, eight. Okay. Back. Well, uh, oh, you know what? What if we combine the key cards? Okay, we have no observations. We're missing five and four. Anything else in here? It's a closet. Uh, okay. Um, well, we have cards. Five. The cards with numbers on them. I'm pretty sure this is where I'm supposed to use them. All right, let's slide these cards and see if they work. And... You're probably gonna have to do the digital route, right? Hi, Digi Timer! Hi, Malia! Hey, D-Stream! Huh? It's not working. Why? Tar damn it! No, 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 that's right. I still have cards I haven't used. Do we have to manually do them? Damn it! Not again. There aren't any more cards in here. I've only got one other hint. Of course! The files! That file said something about a digital root. A digital root. The digital root, huh? What am I supposed to do with- There's a five on that door. Do I have to get a digital root of five? I'm not really sure about this. Ah, whatever. It's worth a shot. Can I do the calculator? Probably not in dialogue. Let's see if this works. I'll just slide the cards that give me the digital root of five through the reader. Operating instructions. Click three cards to select them. The digital root of the, of the selected cards will be displayed. 
Clicking reset will deselect all currently selected cards. After you've selected three cards, click on the device. Hmm. Can I do calculator here? No, that just does the numbers. Well then, let me see. Can I simply think about it and get an answer? In order to get the digital root I want, I need to add three numbers to get two numbers that equal six. So... I would need, if, could I get 15? Hmm. Digital roots are what I call it when I choose a carrot in the video game. <laughs> Code not choose. Oh, that equal five. Why am I saying 15? No, I'm trying to write. I don't know why I got mixed up on six. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. So then I would need... Okay. One, six, seven. There we go. You get 14, you get five. All right, I think this is gonna work. There we go, that's a new noise. Huh, did I just unlock? Well, that light was red and now it's blue. No doubt about it. There's nothing keeping me in here now. Time to go. Are we free? Only door in and out of this room is right next to the weird device. Get, get, hit, click, let me out. Okay, I had to back up and then go. We're free! You understood digital root way faster than me, all. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm very excited though. Huh. You found it! Whoa! Oh! Ow! Oh. Accompanied by a wall of angry water, Junpei shot out of the room and into the opposing wall. Ow! Man, now now that I now that I've seen you found it, I'm thinking of like you remember you remember like the SNES Mario's like preschool game where it had like the little kid voice that goes like you found the cow, and then sometimes there'd be a deeper voice that'd be like that works for me. The water tossed and turned him like a washing machine, and he only stopped rolling when he hit his head on the wall. Ugh. My head. You probably have a concussion. Wait, is it... is it over? I'm so worried about our main protagonist. Ooh. That felt too much like being flushed down a toilet. Damn. Damn. Flushed away! Now we know! We're finally the rats. Junpei struggled to his feet in the still rushing water. Oh, well, gosh. Better than drowning, I guess. We're not safe yet. <laughs> Am I in a hallway? The water that had followed him out of the room was rapidly pouring out of the door. It flowed quickly down the hallway and slammed into the foot of the short flight of stairs. Oh. Just five steps, in fact. And at the top of the short staircase... A door. Another door. You better hustle. Damn this water. God, let me go. You found the gay trout! It's making these flash noises. Junpei leapt up the stairs, straight for the door. Oh, yes, it opened. You found it! The door burst open and Junpei exploded out of it, only to freeze in his tracks. What other possible response could there have been to what he saw? What? What the hell? Oh no, uh... It's like, a, it's like Resident Evil in here, huh? His voice trailed off and all he could do was stare. A polished floor stretched out behind him, ornate staircases rising up from the edges, each of them equidistant from the others. Did I say that right? You can, you can let me know. World Zero is still in effect, but sometimes I, I surprise myself. The stairs and pillars were solid wood and Art Nouveau embellishments and decorations covered the walls and pillars. It looked like nothing so much as the entrance to a luxurious mansion from the early 1900s. This is the inside of a ship? Equidistant. Okay. This is the inside of a ship? Junpei couldn't help but wonder. Well... The water quickly filling the hallway behind him suggested that yes, he was. 
As he looked, a fresh wave rolled out of the room he'd been in, gathering speed as it moved toward the stairs. Yeah, that's what I thought. But is there like this rocking? Is totally. A... I mean, there was shaking. Wait, what the hell? A wave? Oh no! Oh, more. Shit! Shit! Okay, I, I gotta get out of here. Jupe spun around, his wet shoes squeaking in, pro in protest on the polished floor, and ran toward the tremendous staircase in front of him. C deck. C -deck. <laughs> There's different decks. B deck. B -deck. Okay. Hurry! Hurry! Okay, are we going to A deck? We're gonna find the A team there. As he ran, he glanced quickly at the plates mounted on the wall, denoting the decks of the ship. Uh, Adex next. Oh, there's more splatter over there. He took the stairs two at a time, not entirely sure where he would find himself, just as he began to wonder where, in fact, the stairs did lead. What? Oh, oh! Hello! Hello! There sh you sure each individually have very distinct fits going on, huh? Hello! Doomface saw another person out of the corner of his eye. People. Pe people. He stopped short, nearly tripping over the next stair and looked. It wasn't just one person he'd seen. On the landing to the left of the stairs, there were four people staring at him. Oh, and more of them. And on the right side, three more. A lot of people. A whole, a whole collection. You could say we we're maybe getting close to nine persons. All told, there were seven of them. It looked as though they had been on their way down the stairs. They stopped short when they saw Junpei, their eyes wide. He'd done the same, of course, and now they stood there staring at one another. Um. um I gotta I gotta figure out which one's the boy. <laughs> Don't tell me. Junpei didn't move, one foot placed awkwardly on the next step in the middle of a stride. Who are these people? Uh, um, um. This entire interaction lasted only a matter of seconds. The woman spoke to Junpei, and time began to move forward. The woman. This I one. Another one of us now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Oh. It's one thing with the top. The bottom? No. <laughs> Spritzes the character designers from 2009. No. <laughs> She's cute, though. She, she could pull it off. But damn. I would feel scared. <laughs> there are a few bo good boys here. Okay. She's a girl boss. Ah, a, a, a game of girl bosses, I see. I guess there's another one of us now. Uh, a, a, a dancer. The woman was dressed, Junpei thought, rather like a dancer. Brackets. Her clothes covered very litter, little, 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 and her prodigious jewelry, little more. No, I'm not. You better get moving. With no further ceremony, she ran straight past Junpei and toward the doors behind him. Oh, uh, well, okay then. The sudden proximity of a woman with such striking assets left Junpei momentarily stunned. <laughs> I'm just imagining in his, like, Junpei's perspective, dancer. Did he blast? <laughs> and he's just stunned. It's <laughs> the left. <laughs> but the others were the others wasted no time and quickly followed the strange woman. S silver hair? That's a main character right there, specifically from Final Fantasy XIV. Everybody gets everybody has silver hair in that game. Huh? The first to pass Junpei was a young man with silver hair. He threw a quick glance in Junpei's direction as he ran, muttering, <laughs> "One of us, huh?" Thank what? you for permitting, Titty. <laughs> Nothing. Following him was an old, very scary older man. His face calm and without fear. I don't know. Is this calm? I don't. I'm not reading calm from this guy. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna kill me. Soft wrinkles sprouted from his eyes, and he came close enough as he passed for Junpei to see wisps of gray in his hair. His composure and shock of hair struck Junpei as rather that like that of an elderly lion. Going up won't do you any good. There are two doors, but neither of them will open. Maybe it's like determined. Wait, hold on. The, the doors won't open? The next to speak to Junpei was a girl with pink hair and a high voice. Come on! Aren't you coming? You gotta hurry! 
Her small hand was wrapped around the wrist of another man. His eyes were closed, almost as though he were sleeping. His features were graceful, almost serene. And he was dressed rather elegantly for someone his age. What do you mean his age? What age do you think he is? Something about his posture seemed very refined, and Junpei couldn't help feeling he was noble and dignified somehow. He'd certainly never seen one, but this man seemed like what Junpei had always imagined a prince would be like. It's a prince, a prince! That's nine of us, then. Nine? All of the cards are in hand. What does that mean? Junpei opened his mouth to ask what the other man had meant, but the girl with pink hair rushed past him. Wait! They're gone. Just what is going on? There's an old man like a lion, a girl with pink <laughs> hair, and a prince, we and I have no lion, idea man. what they're talking about. Sorry, Junpei. I don't mean to talk over you. I'll stop. Whoa. He turned just in time to see two more people running toward him. One of them had hair like a bird's nest and looked as though a stiff breeze might topple him. And the other was a veritable mountain of a man. Huh? Uh huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, just anime moment. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Just talking in grunts and no screams. The scrawny one scuttled past Junpei as though he were running from something. What was that all about? <laughs> you had a you had a little moment there, didn't you? Hey! What the hell are you just standing there for? Didn't you hear him? Uh. The doors uh. on A deck are no good! We gotta check the doors on B deck. Okay, B deck. Okay, so we're sandwiched between a bad situation. Now go! Before he had a chance to respond, the man laid a massive hand on Junpei's shoulder. With no more effort than Junpei would have used to brush aside a fly, the man shoved him out of the way. Dang! Oh. Well, you gotta watch your strength! Uh, this guy probably has two concussions. Thrown off balance by the man in recent events, it took Junpei a few steps to get his bearings. He finally regained his balance and looked up at what the other seven had been running toward. Hey man, that was dangerous. Yeah, you could have pushed him down the stairs. Huh? Five. There were two pairs of large iron doors set in the wall in front of him. They looked quite sturdy and each had handles jutting from them. Written across the surface of each door in red paint was a number. The door on the right. Four? Four? And this one says five. Another five. They're the same. Hmm. The guy Junpei had decided to call Silver was mumbling to himself. The room I woke up in had a number on the door just like that. You too, eh? Oh, so we all just did the same puzzle. With an arched eyebrow, the lion looked over at Silver. My cell was the same. A number upon the door. I opened it. Ran down the hallway outside and found myself in a rather grand room full of stairs, as I suspected the rest of you. Hmm. It was as though the floodgates had been opened. They all began to talk at once. M me too! Same for me. There was a door with a number on it. It soon became clear that each one of them had awoken in a room with a locked door and solved a puzzle to escape. They'd all ended up in the same room, as though they had been guided there. Yes, we all saw the same thing. That's not important. We need to hurry. You think I don't know that lady? Before the dancer had time to finish, Silver was already running. <sighs> Open, damn it! He grabbed hold of the door labeled five and pulled. <laughs> Thank you for clipping that. However... Fuck, it's not opening. This damn thing won't even budge. Out of my way. All right, let's let's get the let's get the big guns in here. The mountain grabbed Silver's shoulder and tossed him. It's just <laughs> picks him up. <laughs> His path cleared. He took a few steps back, then threw himself at the door. It's not literally like that, but you know. Once, twice, three times, four times. The door shook as his body slammed into it, but showed no signs of breaking or opening. The mountain threw himself at the door again. A 
body slam from a guy that big didn't even budget. There must be some other way. Junpei turned toward door four. Next to the door on the wall was a small box. Huh. This looks just like the device next to the door in that room earlier. So that means this door is probably locked too. But still... He had to check. Thank you for the follow! Enjoy your stay! Junpei grabbed a handle and threw all of his weight in onto it. It was locked as tight as the door next to it, as he'd suspected. Damn it! Junpei punched the door. It did not respond. Are there any other doors? He'd barely finished the thought when the sea deck plate he'd passed on his way up sprang, unbidden, to his mind. His body moved before he had time to think. Junpei turned and ran back toward the stairs. He had scarcely taken a step when... At the top of the stairs, next to the ornate clock embedded in the wall, he saw a person. Oh! It was a girl. She looked to be the same age as Junpei. He froze, unable to look away from her face. He wasn't confounded by her beauty or something equally silly. No, there was another reason he couldn't take his eyes off the girl. Junpei had seen her somewhere before. He couldn't remember where, but he knew. He knew he'd met her before. The girl, too, stared at Junpei, similarly stunned. Her response suggested she'd seen him before as well. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Huh? <clears throat> Without saying a word, Junpei walked slowly toward her. She didn't move. It was almost as though she was held in place by some sort of magic spell. As Junpei stepped onto her landing, the spell broke. No sooner had he set his foot down, the whole ship shook a second time. Yeah! Quake caught the girl unprepared, and she fell. Watch out! Moving on instinct, Junpei leapt to catch her. Or so he thought. Oh, did they both fall down the stairs? Uh-oh. Her face was far closer than it should have been, mere inches from her, his own. Yeah. <sighs> He was flat on his back and she had landed squarely on top of him. The girl seemed as confused as he did and her face suggested she still hadn't fully recovered from seeing him. For a moment, that seemed to stretch for a very long time. They stared at one another. The ship stopped shaking. Everything was quiet. Water could be heard from the bottom of the ship, lapping faintly at walls and ceilings, but eventually that faded as well. The silence was complete, a thick muffling blanket. Would, would water sounds stop? I don't know. Are, like, are we good? The silence was complete, a thick muffling blanket. At last, the girl opened her mouth. Oh my gosh, is that you, Jumpy? Jumpy? Jumpy. Jumpy. Her words echoed through jump June page. <laughs> I almost just started just, all right, you're jumpy now. Her words echoed through Junpei's head and suddenly his memory returned. Uh. Akane. Akane. Why hadn't he realized it before? The girl was Akane Kurashiki. She and Junpei had been friends in childhood. They'd gone to elementary school together for six years. Hold on. Hold on. Uh. I know this game probably has in-game notes, but I think it helps me better. If I write it in a physical book, cause that's how my brain works. Hooray! But what was she doing on the ship? Her soft eyes were only inches away from his own. He could feel the warmth of her face. Feelings he thought long forgotten began to work their way to the surface. <laughs> It'd be like that, yeah. He could feel his face heating up. At that moment. No, you turn that back. A speaker crackled to life, and a cold, eerie voice filled the room.
What? What's that voice? They hurriedly untangled themselves from one another and struggled to their feet. Their seven companions had heard the voice as well, and many of their faces had gone pale. Had... had the guy who was a prince... I wonder if... 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 They already knew, because they were already like, that's nine of us then. So I don't think she was with them, unless they saw her, but then she just wasn't running for some reason. <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> oh, man. Did I say that line? I'll do it again. Their seven companions had heard the voice as well, and many of their faces had gone pale. They looked around frantically, de desperate to locate the source of the voice. At last, they found it. A speaker set in the ceiling. Oh. Yeah, it is kind of bad. Oh, man. I'm sorry for the static noise, y'all. The voice was harsh, obscured occasionally by the crackle of static. This is... Junpei recognized it. How could he have forgotten it? That guy in the gas mask! The gas! Uh, double passed through a speaker, that means it's incomprehensible! Could you imagine? Hey, asshole! What the hell is this? Come on out here! I want to get a look at you! We've got- we've also got zero. Okay. What do you mean to do to us? The speaker sounds like the Swedish chef. Oh no. Nonary game. I'd be scared if I was in like a, a, a some sort of game kidnapped and I just could not understand my kidnappers like instructions on like ooh. What the hell's that? The voice continued, implacable. It, really? Ooh, oh, I don't got. I don't got. I got file. Is it in here? The notary game rules. There's tips. Sorry, I'm just being a little silly. Let's go back and get that. The, those rules. What is he talking about? Hey, there's something in my pocket. Check this out. Silver reached into his pocket and pulled out a small slip of paper. The rest of them reached into their own pockets and pulled out similar slips of paper. Mine has been absolutely destroyed and vaporized by the amount of water soaked through my jeans. Junpei followed suit and dug into the pocket of his pants. No, that's fine. He felt the telltale crumple of paper, slightly damp from his early ordeal. Hey, I, I got one too. Then it would seem Zero has seen fit to grace us each with a letter. Would you mind terribly reading it to us, young man? Sorry! <laughs> Sorry! I just... Like, just imagine... My brain read that as, could you just read this as terribly as possible and not- Would you- I hope you don't mind reading this for us, is what the original intention was. I'm just gonna- <laughs> I'm just gonna read it like I'm zero- <laughs> His request had been delivered to Junpei, who, after a short moment of surprise, did as he'd been asked. On this ship, you will find a handful of doors emblazoned with numbers. I feel like I could make the voices a little louder, actually. I don't know. But I don't know how to do that from here. Ooh. I could save. I don't know. We will call them the numbered doors. The doors in front of you are a pair of the same. The key to opening these numbered doors are the numbered bracelets that each of you possess. Are we going to start figuring out who's got what number now? Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets? Digital root? And find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Only those who have opened the door may pass through. 
Okay. There are, however, limits. Only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. Okay, three to five people, and then there's nine of us. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute. So this thing on my arm is a bracelet. Yeah. He glanced around. It looked like everyone else had one as well, and had come to much the same conclusion. The purpose of the game is simple. Leave this ship alive. Okay. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Leave this ship alive. Hang on, I wanna write I wanna write that down. Next to zero, the nonary game. Because that's important, because it's not kill everybody, right? Or at least we don't know if it's kill yet, but I'm gonna assume, uh, just, just leave, leave the ship alive. Leave ship alive. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm cool as a cucumber. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Door. Okay. Seek a gay trout. <laughs> you said the thing! Titanic alone! Oh man, if only they knew that people couldn't leave the Titanic alone. Oh, so basically, we essentially us waking up is the ship crashing into the iceberg, and now and now through controlled methods, it will sink in nine hours. Maybe that seems very complicated. The voice finished and the speaker went silent. I hear a bell. If it hadn't been for you, I would now be in someone else's digestion. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> I hear a bell. I think it's coming from over by the stairs. It's the clock telling us the time. Everyone had their eyes on the antique clock embedded in the wall. Seven. Eight. Nine. The sound of the ninth bell faded away. The tenth never came. It rang nine times, so nine o'clock then? I think it's 9 p.m. I couldn't see anything when I tried looking out the window earlier. It has to be nighttime. If that is the case, then we would need to escape by 6 a.m. tomorrow. 6 a.m.? All right, nine hours to escape via the the door with the with the nine. The speaker went silent and did not speak again. Hey, you bastard! What do you mean by that? Come out here, you asshole! Hmm. Ugh, that guy won't stop shouting. And the others. Ugh. Gotta figure out who, who these folks are. <sighs> Hello. Hmm. Mm. Uh. Uh. Hey. Ew. <laughs> We're having a moment. We're communicating. 
Junpei too was consumed by his thoughts. Uh, I have way too many questions. Oh, is my mind palace in the metal Mario chamber? Who is Zero? Yay! <laughs> What's the nonary game? What's it for? Yeah, I guess that's that's why. Hmm. Oop. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, how do I get out of this? I don't even know how I did that. I think I touched my scroll wheel weird. Right? Okay, you scroll up and then you see what you skipped. Okay, that's good to know. At least be be aware of. Be more aware of, Katie. Is he some nut job just doing this to mess with us, or does he have some other purpose? Mm hmm. Why pick me to be part of this insane game? And the others. Why are these eight people here? And the most confusing of them all. Why is Akane here? Hmm. I haven't seen her since elementary school. Why her? Why now? Coincidence? No. There's no way. There has to be a reason. I don't know what exactly, but there has to be. Very well. The lion's voice seemed oddly loud in the silence. Standing around here won't do us any good. Best we get moving, don't you think? Get moving? Are you planning to open the numbered doors? Hey, wait! But don't tell me you're actually gonna do what this, this zero says. Hmm, really quick. So, basically... To recap, we are now forced to participate in the nonary game. Our goal is to is to seek a gay trout and a way out. And and the big questions I need to be thinking about is what the purpose of this game is, because I don't think it's just for no reason. This thing, this already is just way too elaborate. Like, we're, we're on a, I'm assuming, a recreation of the Titanic. Or at least maybe a fictional, like, Titanic twist. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. That, that already is like, oh, this is, this is, oh man. This feels very specific for some reason. Why? <laughs> um, and then figure out who Zero is. And what all our connections are. Cause if, if if Akane and Junpei are connected, who's to say that everybody else isn't connected in some way? There's some reason we're all here. No, no, that's not what I mean. I'm gonna have to think about this and hopefully you tell me who you are. The lion shook his head, mildly annoyed. I'm saying let's find another way. After all, we haven't really examined this place yet. We... what? Where have we not looked? Everyone searched a deck already, right? Oh, true. You know what? That's a fair point. We should we should seek the gay trout, but not not any crimson colored fish. Those are red herrings. Agree. Yeah, we were kind of in a rush though, so we probably missed some things. Why don't we check out the lower floors first? We should see how deep this place goes. I can work with that. Then let's go. So they're just wandering. Sea deck. Yep. Whoa! It got flooded. What the hell? It's completely submerged. Damn. If the water level keeps rising like this, we're all gonna drown. So basically only Junpei was on C deck, and everybody else probably came from like A deck. I wonder why Junpei's all by by themselves. Or maybe everybody was maybe other people were also on C deck and they joined them later. No, I don't believe that's something we have to worry about. The prince knelt down and gently drew his hand across it. See? The water's not flowing. That means the origin of the water has been stopped. Like they plugged the window? Perhaps this Zero fellow has used some sort of remote control to seal a watertight door lower down. Oh, whoa, <laughs> sorry. I had a moment there. 
Um. <laughs> um. I don't know, cause like the window broke open. How would you replace the broken window unless it was- said that our time limit was nine hours. Nine hours? In other words, this water won't rise for nine hours. Then you're saying we won't sink till then. Well, that may be a little too optimistic. No point to wishful thinking. <sighs> That's depressing. <laughs> if we don't determine a way to advance from this point, we are stuck on A deck and C deck. It looks that way. Hey, hold on. How about we check C deck before we jump to any conclusions? Yeah, so far we just see water. Anything else we can note? We might find something there. Ah, you're right. I think we should look at the metal doors by the big staircase, too. They're pretty suspicious. Oh yeah, these ones just don't have numbers. No numbers on either door. And I don't see an authentication device, either. Nope. It's locked. Dang. This one, too. Damn, none of the doors are opening. Hey guys, over here. There's another door behind the stairs. Oh? <sighs> this one doesn't open either. Uh. We'll see about that. Hey, old man. Give me a hand. You gonna bust this door down? Using force, I see. Let's give it a try. How old do they want me to think the lion is? If, if a mountain is calling lion old. It won't budge. Could you not just start shouting out of nowhere? You almost gave me a heart attack, you know. They were like quietly like planning to bust this down. Like, and then all of a sudden you just hear two grown adults like fucking going to town on a door with no warning. Oh, sorry. It doesn't appear to have moved even with two of us trying. It's very well made. Try using your brain first. Huh? Oh, what's that? Take a closer look. A keyhole? Right. It's obvious what we need to open this door. <clears throat> a key, huh? You got a problem? No, I just really doubt we'll find a key that easily. We gotta start looking. <sighs> Ignoring the tense air between the two, Junpei moved closer to examine the doorknob. What's this? A circle and a dot. Just above it was a string, strange mark in the shape of a circle surrounding a dot. There's a mark on it. D does it mean something? Probably. Hey, look! Over here, too! Oh? Hmm? Oh! Pink hair was looking at double doors they hadn't examined yet. More doors. I think they're elevators. There's an inverted triangle button by them. Oh. May as well try pressing it. Huh. Eh. Um. Nothing. Uh uh. Maybe the power isn't on. Or we need to do something with this card reader. The card reader light isn't lit up, but there's a there's a what is that? Saturn? That's one of the planetary symbols. Was the other one a planetary symbol too? What's a dot in a circle? Are we doing Sailor Moon today? Astrology? There's a strange mark here too. What is this? It's either... It's like I can't tell if it's Saturn or Pluto. It looks like a lowercase h with a dash drawn across the upper stem of the h. Junpei stared at it for a while. This is the symbol of Saturn. It was Saturn! I know Saturn! Me and Akane shaking hands. It's an astrological symbol. Then the mark on the other door. I think that was the sun symbol. Oh, the sun. That makes sense. It's a big old yellow orb. Okay. Circle dot is the sun. We saw the same symbols on A deck. We did? Probably not the same, right? I don't remember that. A deck, huh? huh? I haven't been there, so I wouldn't know. 
We may as well check again since we're talking about it. Lion's words urged them on, and they took the stairs up. We're getting a lay of the land. There! The two doors next to the stairs. I feel like if I try to take notes on the Saturns, I'm gonna get myself twisted. The one on the left had a keyhole with a similar symbol engraved on it. Actually, you know what? Hang on. C deck. That was C deck, right? So it has Saturn on the elevator. Can I draw these? Yes, I can. And then sun door. That might help me, you know, keep myself oriented. I get lost a lot. I like take me in a car. I don't know where I'm going. Good luck asking me if you need to be guided out of the, out of the area. Let's see. She's right. It, it looks similar to what we saw downstairs. Okay, so this is a deck, and it has this symbol. What was this one? Is this it, could this one be Earth? This is an Earth symbol. Yay! Process of elimination. Because if 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 someone thought that the other one was the Earth symbol, oops, sorry. A deck. So an Earth door. I'm learning so much about astrological signs again. I just think they're cool. The horizontal line symbolizes the equator, oh. and the vertical one represents the prime meridian. Yeah, that makes so much sense. I see. I'm learning. Junpei looked up at the ceiling. Hmm, the ceiling. Metal plates, huh. It's as if it's covering something up. Maybe this was supposed to be a skylight? Thank you for the follow! Enjoy your stay! Perhaps it was a dome of some kind. The Thunderdome! I wish we could get out through there. Be realistic. We'd need a lot of explosives to open that up. The windows too. Huh. They're all covered. I will simply eat through the walls. Parentheses. She does not know that the walls are also eventually going to be metallic hulls. <laughs> there were several windows along both sides of the ship, or at least there had been. They too were covered with metallic plates. In other words... We're trapped. All the exits go nowhere. Hmm... Junpei was not happy. I wonder... Hmm. Sorry, I'm just thinking thoughts. Junpei was not happy. The girl with pink hair spoke up. Probably these are boarded up because, at least with the lower windows, those are underwater. These are probably above water. Well, I'm sure they go somewhere. We just can't open them. Then the mountain spoke. You don't know that. For all we know, they just open into walls or take us in circles. The prince did not agree. No, I'm sure they go somewhere. Otherwise, what point would there be? And we can open them. Well, two of them at least. Oh, you mean the numbered doors. All eyes turn toward the doors with numbers on them. Is this a deck two? Really quick, just to orient myself. I'm just quickly doing a, a note. Five and four. The atmosphere in the room grew tense. Hey, wait a minute. I think I said this earlier, but I don't think we should do that. The dancer moved in front of the doors as if to block them. We'd have to be crazy to open these doors. If we do that, we're doing exactly what Zero wants us to do. Suddenly, everyone began to speak at once. May as well give it a shot. We can't stay here forever. Yes, I'm in favor as well. Aw, democracy. 
No, I'm totally against this. Okay, two, two, four, one against. But shouldn't we at least try? Three, four. We don't know what will happen. We should stay here. We don't have time for that. In eight and a half hours, this ship is going to sink. The clamor of voices made it next to impossible to determine who was saying what. Their arguments grew more and more intense until people were shouting and screaming at one another. Uh. I closed hey, my eyes. Shut up! Shut up! They fell silent, and all eyes turned to Junpei. He felt each stare burning into him, but he refused to flinch. Before we try and decide where we're going to go, there's something else we ought to do. What's that? We need to exchange information. Yeah, who are you? We don't know anything about each other. I want to know who you guys are. There we go, all right. Who you are, where you came from, why you ended up here. I'm gonna put, start putting character stuff on a separate page. Don't tell me you aren't curious too. They were silent. Some of them looked the other way or bit their lip or crossed their arms and stared at the ceiling. But one of them spoke up. It was Akane. I agree. I think Jumpy is right. Jumpy? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about him. I just call him Jumpy. His name is Junfei. All right, well, they all know my name now. I don't have to self-introduce -intro myself. That's cool. She pointed toward Junpei. We're childhood friends. We went to the same elementary school. Wait, stop! Don't tell us stuff we didn't ask you about. Zero's probably watching us right now. What are you gonna do if he's listening in? Oh, would that be bad? Hell yeah, it would! We don't know how much that bastard knows about us. Maybe he just picked a bunch of random people to kidnap. If that is the case, then it'd be dangerous for us to let him know too much. Hmm. If Zero knows who we are, he could go after our families. That makes sense to a degree. Maybe he'd tell us he had them to get us to do stuff, you know? I don't know if that's the point. Like, if it was just ransom, just, you'd just be tied up or something. Though I guess if you're going with the angle of kidnapping random strangers to put them into unfortunate scenarios, and then just missing out the rest of the family, I don't know. Mountain is awesome, he's Kiryu's best friend. But we still need to know what our names are. It's going to be hard to talk to each other if we don't have names. Alright, then why don't we have code names? Code names! To him, apparently it seemed like the obvious solution. Code names? Yeah, we'll each pick something. Like, I'll be seven. Alright, new name. Hang on, I'm assuming that... I'm going to start writing down everyone's number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, and then bracket seven. Okay. Seven? Why are you seven? It seemed a fair question. The mountain stuck out his left arm. Because this bracelet number says seven. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's a good idea. D I love you, seven! Uh, the people are cheering. He smirked. All right, I'm gonna be Santa. Santa? Like Santa Claus? Are you chumps know Japanese? No? Well, sun means three. So. I'll be Santa. You know, like Santa Claus. Fits, don't you think? Hey, you chumps know Japanese. Erm, um, you don't. Pushes up my glasses. Well, you see. <laughs> okay, so we've got Santa. I wonder if there's like any other potential three nickname that would suit him more. Besides just white hair, who knows? Then your bracelet number. Yeah, it's got a three on it. Good job, Grandpa. You're a rude boy. 
Just like the mountain had done, Silver thrust out his left hand. Sure enough, the face of his bracelet read three. Very well then. I'll go next, shall I? My bracelet number is one. Okay. Given that, I think Ace seems appropriate. <laughs> Ace? The Ace of Spades! Numero uno, huh? I'll be Lotus then. As I'm sure you all know, it has eight petals. This is like the opposite of Santa going, do any of you chumps know Japanese? No. This is like the opposite, but it still makes me feel offended somehow. Like, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> like sarcasm. Eight petals. Okay, so Lotus. Which means, of course, that my bracelet number is... Eight. Eight. I would appreciate it if you would call me Snake. Like Snake Eyes? My bracelet Yay! number is two. I just said that because your eyes are closed. Since Ace has chosen cards, then I choose dice. Snake Eyes, clearly. Which is particularly relevant given that I am blind. Oh, you, you, you're actually blind. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I just completely spelled snake wrong on my paper. Couldn't they, like, give you, like, like, a cane or something? I mean, I guess, I guess you have someone looking out for you, which is cool. You can't see? I knew it. How does he know his number? Probably someone told him, like, like, the details. He kept his eyes closed during their entire ordeal, which had suggested something strange, but to hear it said so casually, it was something of a surprise. Everyone seemed a little nervous at the prince's proclamation, but no one seemed to know how to react to it. Me next! Okay, yeah, you're the one looking out for him. There was one person, however, who didn't seem to be surprised in the least. The girl with pink hair. I want to be Clover. So four. Like four leaf Clover. Clover! You know, like a four leaf Clover. Good luck, right? You're definitely gonna kill me. <laughs> Just, I only say that like, assuming, assuming that things are going to go terribly wrong, probably being the character associated with the number four, which is very close to, to, to sounding like death in Japanese, is probably not a good omen. <laughs> anyway. Looking almost bored, she held out her left hand. The face of her bracelet showed the number four. They'd come around to Junpei. He held out his bracelet. All right, my number's five. So my code name is gonna be... Well, I have one. It's not like there's any point to it now. No, let me have a code name! Let me have a code name! Oh, come on, eh? You spoiled my code name. The dancer cut him off mid-sentence. I mean, we all know your name already. You're Junpei. Junpei. Oh, yeah. You don't get brackets because you didn't get a code name in my notes. I'm sorry, Junpei. What would you call Junpei? If you could if you could give Junpei a code name to, to, to let him have fun based on the number five, what would you do? Five jump, Mario. I would could you imagine my 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 code name is Master Hand, named after the Super Smash Brothers b b final boss. <laughs> Puppy. <laughs> so we're gatekeeping the brackets now. All right, fine. Jupe can have brackets. Fine. Hi, Spin. <laughs> they all nodded. Akane stepped forward nervously. Uh, then you should all call me by my name, too. Oh, she's like, I f okay, I feel bad. Because, I mean, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem fair to Jumpy. You're thinking it's not cool for you to hide your name after you told us his. Uh. A 
Akane fidgeted awkwardly. Junpei decided he had to do something. What's your bracelet number? It's six. All we got left is six and nine. Right? Yeah. She hesitated for a moment, then held out her ha left hand. With little sleeves, so cute. She's got such a cute outfit. As she claimed, the bracelet's face showed a six. Junpei looked at it for a moment and thought. All right then, uh, why don't we call you June? Aw, June and Junpei. That's kind of cute. Let me write that down. June. June? Yeah, you know, it's the it's the sixth month of the year. So you're June. So you're June. Jumpy? Akane kneaded her hands and looked up at Junpei, uncertain. He smiled back at her reassuringly. Are you good with that? Ah, <sighs> yeah. You like how normal Junpei sounds? Aw. I'm heading out to prep for my stream. I'll definitely be watching the VOD. Have, have a good stream, Ryan! Have fun! I'll definitely try to get these uploaded ASAP. I've got- I've actually started uploading, speaking of the VOD channel, um, I've started uploading some VODs. I'm missing some that, unfortunately, I did not highlight before it, uh, got scooted off of Twitch, but I still have the actual VOD, so I just have to remember to, like, overnight upload those, because I don't want to- I don't want to choke up the internet during the day. I've got enough people needing it for work as is. Um, but, yeah. Expect more VODs, more regularly again. She thought about it for a few more minutes, then seemed to come to a decision and gave Junpei a small nod. Okay then. Their names decided, Junpei ran over to them quickly in his head. Or Junpei ran over them quickly in his head. Well, no, we're missing a guy. Hang on, there's the, there's the ninth man. So this is how everyone breaks down. One is Ace. Two is Snake. Three is Santa. Four is Clover. Five is me. Six is June. Seven is seven. And eight is Lotus. That means eight of us have revealed our bracelet numbers. Hey. The only one left is... One is Ace, it's Katie. Ace Pride, bam. <laughs> okay, why have we why have we pumped the brakes to specifically specifically leave out the nine man? That glasses guy with hair like a bird's nest. Birdly, you haven't said a thing so far, have you? A five in Japanese is Go, so you'd call Junpei Goku. Hey, it's me, Goku! That'd be awesome. Junpei in a Goku cosplay. Smiling so sweetly. Just like, it's just like my, my childhood dream. Do a Kamehameha. Uh, uh. His skin was pale, his breathing was heavy, and he was soaked with nervous sweat. <laughs> His behavior seemed very suspicious, or perhaps simply emotionally unstable? It was difficult to tell. Whatever the case, it seemed clear that he had only a fingertip's worth of a grip on his sanity. Oh, jeez. The, the girl with pink hair, Clover, walked up to him slowly. She put her hands on her hips and eyed him suspiciously. What number are you? <coughs> Everyone, everyone knows that there, there's nine of them, Clover. So, mm. he didn't answer. His bloodshot eyes twitched from person to person, and his breath came in hot pants. Hey, I'm talking to you. The man licked his dry lips with a shaking tongue and spoke with a voice like old paper. Isn't it obvious? There are nine people here. And you know who numbers one through eight are. Even he's like, come on, man. But that is still weird, though. Come on, bro. I'm the only one left. But what's your name? What do you want to be called? So you're nine? Nine. Yeah. He extended a trembling arm. The bracelet did indeed say nine. 
Clover looked at it contemptuously. What's your code name? Uh, code name? What do you want us to call you? We all made up names. You should too. I don't need one. Why? Why not? Because I am not going to stay here with you. He took a shuddering breath and exhaled. Hey, so nine is unknown still. Clover looked at him with something very, something very like disgust. You've got some sort of plan? I do. Yeah? What's that? You sure you want to know? Oh, no. Yeah? Yeah? All right. Let me show you. I'm going to do this. Oh, no. He got up right. <laughs> he stopped tripping. Look out. <gasps> By the time they realized what, was go what he was doing, it was too late to stop him. The man's body moved like a snake's. In the blink of an eye, he had slid around behind her and wrapped his arm around her waist. Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? Silver, Santa, leapt forward toward Clover and the ninth man. He was halfway there when- Stay back! Did you somehow get a weapon? Suddenly, the man's hand dove into his pocket. Oh, ah. shit, a knife! That's like a fruit peeler. Still very dangerous, though. Like a steak knife. He held it to Clover's pale, quivering neck. If you get any closer- <laughs> The Muppet has a knife! I'll cut her open! Oh, jeez. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Why do we have to leap to murder? Come on. The man's smile was neither friendly nor reassuring. Sweat poured down his neck, soaking the collar of his shirt. Clover, are you all right? The prince, Snake's voice, sounded oddly concerned. Yeah, I'm fine. Her voice shook, making her words even less convincing. What the hell are you trying to do? I told you. This is my plan. What are you gonna do to her, you sick son of a bitch? Don't worry. I'm not gonna do anything to her. If she just does what I tell her to, I'll let her go. He started to move backwards slowly, keeping his grip on Clover. <laughs> slowly? That's right. Just follow me. Keeping their distance, Junpei and the others followed. Eventually, the man reached the wall. He gave a start as his back touched it, then glanced around quickly and spoke. Here, verify. Verify? <gasps> the left. Look on your left. Do you see the device on the wall? The scanner? Place your hand on the scanner panel, the round part. The ninth man knows a lot. What if I don't? The man's nostrils flared and he looked like he was about to choke. Are you an idiot? What do you think? I could slit your throat right now. I'll kill you if I have to. Jeez, what? What's the problem? All I need is your bracelet. I need you to fill out the capture. <laughs> Just do it. Do it now! He pressed the knife against Clover's neck hard. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Slowly, she stretched her left hand out toward the device. Like this? Her back was to it, and she had to feel around for a moment before she could find the circular panel. Or, it made a cold electronic noise, and on the display above her hand, an asterisk appeared. So four. So that's how it works. It reads the bracelet. He called that round part of the device the scanner panel. If we put our left hand on it, our bracelet number gets entered into the device. Then, Ooh. should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Junpei shifted his eyes to the door itself. The number on it was five. Door five. But why does this guy know so much about how this thing works? That's what I'm saying! It's like he knows exactly what to do. 
Zero mentioned that some, like some people might know, like they've, 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 it was something like that, right? So maybe he knows. Good, good, you're done. Next. His bloodshot eyes crept from person to person until finally, they stopped on the lion, Ace. You, right? You're the one with the number one bracelet, right? Yes, I am. So? So they're gonna do four plus one plus nine equals uh, four, pfft, I can't talk. One plus four, not, one plus four, five. Nine plus five, yeah. Then you're next. Okay. Just verify your number like this little brat did. <laughs> what are you doing? Do it! Don't you care what happens to her? Okay, okay, just calm down. Ace held up his hands, palms out. The ninth man jerked his chin toward the device. I'm coming over. Slowly, cautiously, Ace moved toward the device. Is he gonna make like someone else scan it? After what seemed like an agonizing eternity, he reached it. Now, verify. All right, this is what you wanted, right? Ace nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. The device beeped again, and a second asterisk appeared. Now the device has both Clover and Ace's numbers, four and one. Four plus one is five. It's the same as the number written on the door. But they still need one more, but at it least. Won't open yet. Only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. One more person. If what Zero said is true, he needs one more person. Who? Who does he need? Get back! His voice shook, but the knife he held to Clover's throat made his words a command. Ace took two, then three steps back. No! Farther! More than that! Go all the way back! Okay. Slowly, Ace did what he was told. <laughs> The ninth man's lips curled into a cruel, twisted smile. Wait, uh, don't tell me. That was when Junpei understood his plan. Clover's four and Ace is one. Added to the ninth man's nine. Four plus one plus nine is 14. Okay, I thought it was 14, but for whatever reason, my brain kept being like, doubt, doubt, doubt. <laughs> okay. And the digital root of 14, one plus four is five. In other words... <laughs> Thank God you were all so cooperative. I mean, but like... Now, I can get out of this nightmare. But, but dude, this isn't the nine door, it's a five! He pressed his own hand against the scanner panel. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. He dropped his hand to the lever on the side of the device and pulled. The door opened with a heavy, metallic groan. Good! I don't need you anymore! <laughs> he let go of Clover. Wait! Junpei leapt toward the ninth man, but he wasn't fast enough. Here! She's all yours! The man shoved Clover. And ho hopped through the door. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Where do you think you're going? I'm going off ahead now. Well then, goodbye. He raised his hand and waved, a twisted smirk on his face. Then he was gone. The door ground shut with a dull clang of of metal on metal. Clover, are you all right? Snake ran to Clover's side as she lay on the floor. Yeah, I'm fine. She climbed unsteadily to her feet, and once there, leaned heavily on Snake's shoulder for support. Damn it! Junpei ran to the door. That bastard! The others followed him. 
Several pairs of hands grabbed hold of the handles and pulled. Open, damn it! But... Hmm... Sorry, I just had a thought. Cause, cause n n now they're gonna try. They grunted and strained, but... Shit! It won't budge. That was when Lotus, the dancer, spoke. Her voice was quiet. Do you hear something? Like... what? Like... some sort of... beeping. There was beeping when he left. Junpei pressed his ear against the cold metal of the door. The others did the same. It's beeping. You're right. I can hear it too. What is it? Then they heard something else. It was the ninth man. Why is it stopping? God damn it! Uh oh. You you lied. Lied? This wasn't supposed to happen! Okay. This is wrong! This is wrong! Okay. His voice shook with fear. Safe on the outside, they stepped back from the door and looked at one another. What is happening in there? Open the door, please! I'm begging you! Oh no. Help me! Please get me out of here! Menacing blinks. Get me out of here! Oh no. Ugh, God damn it! Junpei grabbed hold of the device. Engaged. He slammed his hand on the scanner panel. Nothing happened. Why? Why won't it work? Engaged? Is it because it's occupied? Uh, oh my god, oh my god! There's no time left! Oh no, what's- Listen, I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! He lied to me. It was him! He killed me! It was him! Say your name! <laughs> um. Hey, was that a bomb? Oops. <laughs> the explosion rocked the room. Instinctively, they ducked, then stood up slowly when they realized there was no danger. <sighs> no one spoke. Silence filled the room. A beep? All eyes turned towards it. Did that thing bacon. just make that sound? Oh, it's bacon! Oh no! <laughs> Ooh, there ain't nobody alive in there anymore! <laughs> Uh-oh! Did that thing just make that sound? Um, the display changed from engaged to vacant. Oh, sorry, I'm like adjusting really quick in my chair. Gotta follow the rules, bro! Oh no! Let's see if we can open it. Seven, the mountain, swallowed hard. Okay. Junpei nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. A red asterisk appeared on the LCD panel. Five. Well, it registered my bracelet number, but it won't open with one person. We need at least two more people. What to do? Oh, I can choose. Um. Hmm. I wonder. I mean, if it just blew up, if it just blew up, maybe we should just, maybe we should have the boys investigate a uh, snake and seven, two plus seven. Well, I mean, snake is blind. At least, at least snake, like if we're trying to like probably keep uh, a good number of folks from being blasted by gore. I feel like of these options, Snake and Seven makes me feel 
the least uncomfortable. Snake, Seven, you think you could give me a hand here? The pun was a little too on the nose, but the mood was still grim. Mm hmm? <sighs> Both Santa and June lifted their hands silently. He verified and she followed suit. 5 plus 2 plus 7 equals 14. The digital root of 14, 1 plus 4, equals 5. Oh, uh, you know what? I wonder how badly not having a guy alive messes- Man, oh man, now we just automatically have one guy dead. Hi, Char! <laughs> Boys night! <laughs> Let's go. What's the content warning command again? Expression point CW, which I assume, uh, once this door is open, we're probably going to get greeted to a very vivid description of gore. Oh boy! Watching you on Mars TV. Oh, hi from Mars TV! Uh, hi, 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 hi! Let's get ready to do some, some silly business, shall we? This should do it. Now we just need to pull the lever on the side. You guys ready? Ooh. We're gonna open it. Junpei grabbed the lever and looked back over his shoulder. They stiffened and nodded. Junpei nodded back and set his mouth in a grim line. Then he slowly lowered the lever. A boy's night! <laughs> there was a metallic groan and the door slid open. A breath of air drifted out of it, carrying a stench that nearly made them gag. Warning! Warning! Final warning! It's about to get gross. Junpei grimaced and put a hand over his mouth. Oh my god. Good god. Lotus and Ace shuddered. Seven grunted. Oh, that's... pretty bad. Even Santa's voice shook. He... he blew up. He blew up! Oh no, he blew up! It appeared that Santa was right. The hallway on the other side of the door was splattered with chunks of torn flesh and dark red blood. Ah! Ah! The shriek echoed across the room. That's a- oh man. Oh, you really did blow up, huh? It had come from June. Then her strength left her as she dropped. As Junpei turned to catch her, the door groaned shut. Okay, good. Nobody went in. Good. We'll deal with that in a second. She crumpled to the floor. Uh, June, uh, uh, are you okay? Junpei dropped to his knees and put his arm around her shoulders. Oh no, that was when he noticed. Her whole body was feverish. She was radiating intense heat. What the hell? Where'd this fever come from? What? Uh, why you got a fever? June didn't answer. Her face looked like wax, and her whole body began to shake. All right, okay, uh, let's just rest for a minute. Okay. okay. Uh, you think you can walk? All right, okay, um, um, ooh, okay. She nodded weakly. Junpei lifted June to her feet and guided her to a nearby chair. Here we go. As she, as gently as he could, he set her down in it. How are Aww. you feeling? Are, are you all right? She nodded, and as she did, a single huge tear rolled down the side of her face. Why? Why did this happen? Her voice cracked, broken by misery and grief, and choked by sobs. Why did this happen? Junpei spun around. Do any of you know what the fuck is going on here? Who's Zero? What's this nonary game? Come on! Anybody? Anything? Oh, putting on putting on the big scary voice now that his childhood friend is so upset. Uh, what the hell is going on? What are we doing here? No one spoke. A snake, Santa, Clover, Seven, and Lotus. They simply stood there, seven pairs of downcast eyes and seven grim lines for mouths. <laughs> June's body shook with silent sobs. They slowed as the minutes ticked by, and eventually they stopped. Poor June. Poor everybody. They put a bomb in that guy. 
Then suddenly, in the cold, heavy silence that had enveloped them like a thick fog, a bell began to ring. The clock in the central hall. Seven, eight, nine, ten times. And then, on the tenth ring, it stopped. The sound of the bed faded, or the bed, the, the sound of the bell faded away into silence. It's ten o'clock then. Okay, so really quick, hang on. I'm going to make a note. Um, okay, so here's, here, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe I, like, what major events happen uh, in these hours? You know what? If I'm doing the doors on this page, maybe I'm I'm serious about solving this mystery. I'm trying to keep track. I know this game gets crazy, so I want to at least be prepared. <laughs> um First hour. Uh five and four door. Ninth explodes. So this happens. The first hour. Cool. Ace said what each of them had been thinking. That means it's been an hour since Zero's little announcement. Seven's deep voice echoed across the room. Fuck! I've had enough of this crap! Santa leapt to his feet. His feasts. His feasts. He clenched his toes. <laughs> <laughs> Santa leapt to his feet, his fists clenched. How long are we gonna pussyfoot around like this? <laughs> We've only got eight hours until this time limit zero was going on about is up. Let's get going already! Go! Go! Santa's outburst fell on deaf ears. No one seemed to agree with him. They stared back at him, their eyes blank and their faces tired. Finally, Lotus spoke. No, I refuse. I'm not going to end up like him. Him? You mean the ninth man? Of course, who else? In his mind's eye, Junpei saw the corpse again. Blood. Oh. Blood. Blood and pieces of flesh. The dark reddish black pool of blood. The scattered pieces of flesh. Organs strewn across the floor like, a like the blossoming of a grotesque flower. The explosion that had torn through his body has been powerful. That's no way for a person to die. The ninth man's neck has been twisted and not angled. Jeez. Junpei suspected the detonation had thrown him against the wall. Half of his face was crushed and the other half was covered in blood. Most of his abdomen has been emptied, either by the explosion or by gravity. He had landed on his back, and stark white ribs jutted up out of his chest, like the legs of some sort of macabre crab. Jesus! Y'all vote, y'all voting for that Minecraft crap? <laughs> Not the time. <clears throat> Trying to distract myself. Junpei felt something flip in his stomach. I think he just screwed up. Eyebrows went up, and Santa continued. He probably set off some sort of trap, and that killed him. Well, because everybody, like, there's the line, everybody needs to contribute, right? I'm not gonna screw up like that. I'm getting out of here alive! <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Snake with the giggles. Whew, I think I think blood time is over, at least for the minute. Oh jeez, sorry everybody. Whatever Snake was laughing at, Santa did not find particularly humorous. What's so goddamn funny? Oh, my apologies. You were just uh, so very confident. I couldn't help myself. What hmm? the fuck? I think you've mistaken the situation. Do, what, what, what secrets do you know? Huh? What do you know? The ninth man's death. It had nothing to do with the trap. Or at least not the sort of trap you imagine it did. Oh, okay. You just know. You just, or you, you've solved the riddle. 
of this man's explosion. Then? He broke one of Zero's rules. That was why he died. Quite simple if you think about it. Dang. Snake got you good, Santa. S why don't you simply think about it, hmm? Huh? Huh? You still don't... <sighs> All right. How about you take a moment and think back to what Zero said? Specifically, what did he say about the number of people? He said only three to five people can pass through one numbered door, right? And after that? You've forgotten the relevant part. What did Zero say? <sighs> Santa furrowed his brow in thought. Junpei thought back. Zero said that everyone who verified had to go. Yes. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute, right? I think it was something like that. Whatever it was, it, it means that groups of less than three or more than five can't go through. Right. That is correct. A gold star for you, Junpei. Yeah, get a gold star! Snake inclined his head toward Junpei. The ninth man, however, broke that rule. He tried to pass through a numbered door by himself. That was why he was executed. And Zero's watching us from somewhere. Making sure we don't break any rules. I don't know. Are there cameras? Oh, I'm not so sure of that. Oh, never mind. Snake is going to immediately debunk this for us. I'm not even going to have to look. Why not? Because this execution system is entirely automatic. You didn't notice? There's no need for him to monitor us. What do you mean? Snake looked at Seven with what could only be described as pity and sighed. Very well. I see it must be me who tells you. Okay. I've waited long enough, I suppose. I had hoped Zero might spare me the trouble, but... <laughs> yeah. Looked. That seems increasingly unlikely. He couldn't see them, of course, but perhaps Snake sensed the confused eyes upon him. When Ace spoke, he gave words to everyone else's thoughts. Do you know something? Well, I know a great many things, but yes. What is it you know? Here. Snake removed a card from the pocket of his jacket. A card? What does it say? See for yourself. With a flourish, he presented it to Ace, who took a close look at it and spoke. Come on now, what's the point of giving me this? Oh, did I double-click? No, okay. I got scared, I did that. We're fine. Give me that. Santa snatched the card from Ace, but his expression of disgust quickly turned to one of confusion. Huh? The hell is this? Seven tugged it out of Santa's hands. <laughs> I see. The card went from Seven to Lotus, from Lotus to June, and finally to Junpei. They're all, they're all being so brave, not spoiling it for each other. Is it more evil math? We'll see. He looked at it and understood. This Braille. is Braille. This is Braille. This is Braille. Braille, the written language of the blind. The card was covered with small embossed bumps. Junpei couldn't re or bleh, couldn't. Junpei could recognize it, but he certainly couldn't read it. Sorry guys, I I can't read this. Here, have it back. Junpei handed the card back to Snake, who nodded at him with a small smirk. Okay, that was fun. What's so important about that card? I found it in my pocket. I can only assume it is a message from Zero. From Zero? A message? Wh what does it say? Suddenly, everyone was crowding around Snake, desperate to hear what the message said. Santa especially looked as if... He were about to grab hold of Snake and shake the answers from him. Snake raised his hand. Calm down now. No need to panic. You don't need to force me. I'll read it. Junpei swallowed hard and waited for him to start. 
he was not the only one. Presently, Snake began to read, his voice calm. His fingers glided over the tiny bumps as he spoke. <clears throat> Bracelet number two. Since you are not blessed with sight, I shall bless you and only you with information. I shall tell you of the function of the red, of the dead, and of the bracelet. Red, dead, and bracelet. Oh no! Oh no, he suddenly put the gas mask on! Damn it, we can't understand him anymore! So it's the scanner. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to think of how I want to note this down. The dead is the deactivation device. It does exactly what it says. Once you have passed through the number door, you must use the dead to stop the detonator in your bracelet. There's a detonator in the bracelet? But perhaps you are wondering, what does this detonator detonate? I'm afraid this might be something of a surprise. I have placed a small arm inside of you, and people who you are about to meet. Oh. You swallowed it while you were unconscious. I have no doubt, by the time you read this note, the bar will have passed your stomach and found it way to your small intestine. In other words, you would be unable to regurgitate it. I suggest you do not try. Damn. As I mentioned before, the bracelet on your left hand contains a detonator. Think of it as a remote fuse, or timer, for God in your body. There is only one condition to cause it to detonate. That condition is that you enter a numbered door. Once you have done so, the time will activate, no matter who you may be. You will have 81 seconds. Nine. Digital route nine. I see. If, after that time, the detonator has not been deactivated, it will send a signal to the bomb in your body, instructing it to explode. In order to deactivate the detonator, every person who verified their number at the red must also verify their numbers at the dead. Once all numbers have been verified by the dead, you need only pull the lever at its side. And the countdown will cease. Anyone who does not verify their number at the red will find themselves unable to verify their number at the dead. That is to say, if you can pass through a number door without first verifying your number at the red, in 81 seconds, you will be dead. Mm. You must also keep in mind that the number doors will close automatically after 9 seconds have passed. So long as the doors open, the dead will not function. You would do well to remember this. Lastly, last discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In the past, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, what acts on it now is heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. There is no other way to remove your bracelet. Hmm. If you attempt to force it off or disable the detonator, the bomb within you will immediately explode. Is that true? I don't know if that's true. I'll have to go back and look at when we were in the the ship um, in the first puzzle room because I feel like Junpei definitely did try to take it off. Hmm. So, I mean, 
assuming that this in is indeed false, I'll have to think about if what this is saying is true. Hang on. So, to summarize, we use the red to enter. And then we use the dead to disable the bomb. And then supposedly the only way we could take it off uh, is dying or leaving by escape. Or zero heartbeat. Okay. If you get out the pliers, you're fucking done. <laughs> if you damage it by trying to remove it, maybe. Maybe Zero's being nicies because they, they like watching him scurrying around like a weird animal. That's the thing, too, is that Snake brought up that this is, like, set up, uh... What was it? Not uh, Is it automatically? Autonomously? Like, Zero wasn't watching us right now. That just kind of happened, like, remote, like, with no, like... Like, it was set up to happen that way, so Zero could not be watching us remotely. Thank you. This is all the information which I can impart to you. How you choose to use it is for you to decide. If used wisely, you can eliminate those who might be a danger to you. For a time, you would be able to control your fate. So automatically, yeah, it's all set up. Yeah. So if we're going to go with Snake's theory, I should keep that in mind. Like, why it's set up that way. Make it simple. I wish you the best of luck. Snake finished reading and carefully returned the card to his pocket. So it's saying... Only those who verify their numbers at the red can pass through the number doors. Autonomous, that too. Teams can't add or subtract people after they're scanned in. The reds, deads, and bracelets enforce the rules. They're judge, jury, and executioner. Oh! <laughs> Oh, oh, and they're all, of course, of course, they're trying anyway. Shit, a fucking bomb! C come out, uh, uh, come out, damn it! It's not that easy. In defiance of Zero's suggestions, both Santa and Seven put fingers down their throats and began to gag. The rest stiffened. Some touched their stomachs. Some simply stared at their bracelets. Oh man, I wonder how big it actually is. Like if it could be felt. Junpei gingerly touched his stomach. Mm. There's a bomb inside me. There's a bomb. The thought of it made him queasy. Oh. His stomach felt oddly hollow, and his legs were weak. What made Zero think creating this horror show of a game was a good idea? Junpei looked over at the others. All right. I'm going to ask one more time. Do any of you know anything about Zero? Uh-uh. They were all silent, each person waiting to hear what the others would say. Finally, Santa spoke. Actually, I... I saw him. I saw Zero when I got grabbed. I didn't see his face, though. Son of a bitch was wearing some kind of gas mask. What the hell? Come on, guys, give me something. You know, like, surprise or something? Instead, it was Santa who looked surprised. There was a moment of silence and then everyone spoke at once. I saw that too. I did as well. Me too. I didn't see inside the mask, though. That mask, it was really scary. Huh? Why would you say it like that? <laughs> oh, so... All of our abductions were the same. Like, hang on. 
Like, like, is it bad that I just think Akane June is just weird because she wasn't with the whole group of us? <laughs> and then instead of saying, oh, yeah, I saw it, she's like, that mask was scary. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking. I think I'm looking too into oh. it. We were taken from home at midnight. The person claiming to be Zero had a mask on. There was white smoke, and then each of us passed out. We woke up to find ourselves on D-Deck, in a room with a three-level bunk bed. How about you, Seven? Did the same happen to you? Wait, so then did they all wake up on D-Deck, or is he just kind of projecting? Only Seven's story seemed to lack the detail of, of the others. Oh, me? Yeah, well, mine was just like the rest of yours. That was all he had said. It had occurred to Junpei at the time that it sounded somewhat strange, but he didn't press the issue. Okay, uh, that's good enough for now. He hadn't done so, because there was something that struck him as even stranger. So, I have a question. That was the mystery of the relationship between Snake and Clover. Snake and Clover. You were both kidnapped from the same room, and you woke up together. Junpei looked at them thoughtfully. So, what's the deal with the two of you anyway? It was Clover that answered. Clearly, she felt she had nothing to hide. We're siblings. Siblings, siblings, we are siblings. Siblings? Uh, yes? Snake is my older brother, obviously. That means I'm his little sister. That really so hard to understand. Are we going to go through the thing of like, Bruh? But, but you have pink hair and you have not pink hair. How? <laughs> Junpei was taken aback. The others seemed just as surprised. She is correct, of course. He laid his hand on Clover's shoulder. Are you, uh, surprised? Well, yeah, but... Why? There are other people here with connections to one another. Those two, for instance. Snake pointed at Junpei and Jun. Oh, you mean between Jumpy and me? Ah, yes. You did say you were childhood friends, didn't you? You went to school together? Yeah. June glanced at Junpei, uncomfortable with the sudden attention. Well, yeah. Junpei felt somewhat nervous as well, and tried to scratch his head as casually as possible. The, the, the most non-casual move, going to scratch your head as a gesture to be chill. Hey, you think maybe we could figure out who Zero is this way? It's cute, though. Yeah, you're right. You connect the dots between the victims, and that leads you to the perp. Textbook stuff. Junpei, Jun, does any of this ring a bell? Huh, ring a bell. Ring a ding. Ring a bell? Ring a ding. They looked at one another, and like it was staged, they both tilted their neck at the same time. Oh no, they're exchanging brain cells. <laughs> well, perhaps you went to school with the son of a multimillionaire. A millionaire? Son? Well, someone bought this boat and set up all of this. Yeah, this is. I can't imagine how much this would cost. Whoever Zero is, they must be incredibly rich. Well, we can't be sure of that. To me, this seems as though it's the work of an organization, not an individual. Most likely, Zero is simply the representative of a larger group. Hmm. What sort of organization? It could be a number of things. An army, perhaps, or a research group? I don't know. Don't groups like that kind of make a big deal of, of them being a group? Maybe I've seen too, too many Pokemon games where everyone's shouting about their beliefs from the, from the rooftops and making it known that they are the coolest group ever and definitely not a single unit. Perhaps this is all some sort of psychological experiment. <laughs> if it is, then it's a pretty fucked up experiment. 
I mean, come on! A guy's dead! Yeah. The word dead hung in the air, heavy and ominous. The room went quiet again. I don't know who the hell this Zero asshole is, but I know for sure he's gotta be pretty fucked up in the head to do all this. If this was all one guy, then he's got some serious issues. Even with the specter of death hanging over them, their discussions continued for some time. What? Like, again, like... Like, I know they're just trying to... Well, not again. I Let me rephrase. Like, I know they're trying to figure out sort of, like, a lot of stuff at once. So it's understandable how this could fall to the wayside. But I'm still thinking about, like, he lied to me. Like, who lied? Zero lied? Someone else lied? Does someone have time to, like, do a sneaky trick? Oh, did I even read that? I thought we were finished with that topic. Let me double check. Even with the specter of death hanging over them, the discussions continued for some time. Tell you what, chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the BRB screen. You're not going to hear the music for a second. I'm also, you know what? Hang on. Can I? Can I? Menu. It's been a while since I've, since I've saved. Here. Click, click, click. No, actually, that's prologue. What? No. There we go. No data. Prologue. Well, I mean, maybe I should try to keep it on one. I don't know. No, you know what? Let's not try to worry about save slots. Gonna save. I'm gonna take a break. Don't return to the tile screen because music doesn't exist there. Um, but what I'm gonna probably do is take a break, and then. Come back maybe five, ten-ish minutes. I'm probably gonna go uh, a bit longer. I have I have stuff to do at nine, so I know I'm gonna probably cut myself off at like 8.30 at the latest, but I wanna see more. I wanna see more. So I'm just gonna get up, stretch, refill my water, and we'll get right back to it, okay? Don't be scared when it gets quiet. I'll get you back to tune soon. Whee!
You know what I forgot happened when I click stuff? The sound goes off. Jump scares you. Jump scares you with my return. Hi! Hi, Joy! Hi, 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 hi! Oh my goodness, how are you? Damn, sorry. I just got my water. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very refreshed. Let me actually take a sip really quick. Hmm. Also, really quick, Joy. I need to warn you. Ah, I need to warn you. It, it's not happening right now, but this game has had moments where there have been static things in it. I want you to be aware. I don't know when it'll happen again. Because it was a guy talking on a loudspeaker, which, of course, it's some loudspeaker nonsense that it happens, right? But I hope you're doing good. I care you. I love you. I can't wait to see you later. Let's see. We are currently... 
playing 999. A man just exploded. We're trying to figure out how to move on. But yes, let us resume and figure out what the heck we're going to do about all this. But then what should we do? We should talk it through. Yeah, let's fig let's let's talk it out, gang. Oh my god, enough! All we're doing is talking! Santa threw up his hands. His voice was was his voice with filled with irritation. I'm going to assume that's was. But I'm glad that at least that wasn't me. That was the sentence that time. Rare moment where rule zero is not me! Woo! <laughs> talking won't solve anything! It can't help us find our way out of here. You really sure you want to just sit around? We've only got seven and a half hours left. We already wasted an hour and a half of our nine hours. Okay, so so far the first half of hour two has just been them still talking it out. Okay. Everyone there was already on the edge of panic, but Santa told them only made that feeling more intense. No one was willing to argue this time. You're right. Very well, then. There's only one way for us to proceed. Sure not gonna be fun running around knowing we gotta jump when Zero says jump. Well, it's stupid to just sit around here doing nothing. Well, thanks to Snake's card, at least we have some idea of how this all works. Right. Now, now we know that there are stakes at play. Correct. And so long as we all follow the rules, we should, uh we will most likely be all right. Okay. But... But what? Who's going to go in which door? Okay, now now here's the part where we're figuring out how to split. June looked toward the numbered doors. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. We can't have any more than five people in one door. If we still had the ninth man, in this case, we would have to do four people and five people. If there were three doors, at least we'd have a little more flexibility. Maybe? I don't actually know. But now, we're down to eight. All eight of us can't go in the same door. Then it would seem we will have to split up. Wait! Lotus looked terrified. I'm telling you now, there is no way in hell that I'm going into door five. Okay, doesn't want to deal with the gore. Come on now. Don't be selfish. Call me whatever the hell you want. I'm not going in there. If I'm going to have to walk through all that blood, then I'd rather stay here. <sighs> and we were doing so well. Lotus is like, I don't care if I'm going to die on this ship. I'm not getting out of this chair. Ace shook his head sadly. Sorry, but I ain't going in there either. Someone else can go into door five. Okay, so that means... Three and eight are going in the door four. Oh, Santa, not you too. Hey, man, I just bought these shoes. <laughs> you gotta protect the shoes, you I think guess. I'm getting some creepy dude's blood all over him? You got another thing coming. That was the last straw. What the hell, man? All right, get him, Junpei. <laughs> Weren't you the one who kept saying we should get going? Yeah, so? Doesn't mean I wanted to go into door five. Oh, God. There was an awkward silence. Finally, Seven spoke. Fine, I'll go into door five. I can't go in there alone, though. Anyone else willing to come with me? Okay, so Seven is in five. There was another long silence. This time, Snake was the one to break it. I'll go. Hmm. What? Don't worry, you'll be fine. We may part now, but I'm certain we'll meet again later. How do you know that? Because I do. That's not an answer! If you're going, I'm going too. I'm going into door five. What am I going to do with you? There's nothing you have to do. A stepped forward. If I join you, the problem is solved, correct? Seven is seven, and Snake is two. Okay. And if you add Clover's four and my one, the digital route will be five. 
Seven plus two plus four plus one is 14. The digital root of 14, one plus four is five. Oh, it works perfectly. The four of us can go into door five. Wait, what about the other four? What's their digital root gonna be? Junpei did a quick mental calculation. Lotus, Santa, June, and me. Okay, so that's eight, three, six, five. Our bracelet numbers are eight, three, six, and five. Yay, I passed the test. Eight, three, six, five. What would our digital root be? Am I allowed to do the calculator here? Yes. What does it do? 22, so it'd be four. Okay. Oof. Eight plus three plus six plus five is 22. So. I know numbers! The digital root of 22, two plus two equals four. He repeated what he determined. It's four. Add up our four bracelet numbers and the digital root is four. Then we can go into door four. Yeah. Huh. That worked out well. So the team assignments will be like this. Seven, Snake, Clover, and Ace. They would go through door five. Right. Lotus, Santa, June, and me will go through door four. But... Are these really the teams I want? Beyond door five is what remains of the ninth man. See, I... Is it bad that, like, I want to go to door five? Because, like, okay, but there's a there's a bracelet in there, maybe? Like, maybe the bracelet didn't get blown up? I would like to pick that up, please. I never want to see that thing again, but something's telling me that it'd be a good idea to examine the corpse even just a little closer. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I want to I wanna see if, like, you know... Maybe it'd be good to have. Also a knife, you know, have a weapon, if that didn't get shattered. Of course, if I went through door five, I wouldn't be going with Lotus and Santa. I could bring June with me through door five, but that means she'd have to see the body in there. I don't want to put her through that. Hmm. The knife is what held all the blood. This is my blood dagger, my blood knife. It would be very bad if something were to happen to it. Junpei was torn. Should I stay silent and go through door four? Or should I stop them and insist on door five? As he turned his options over and over in his mind, Ace spoke up. All right then. It seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? He began to walk forward towards door five. I'm going through door five. Clover and Snake followed, with Seven a short distance behind. We're over there too, right, Snake? The door's not going anywhere. Slow down. I... All right, decision time. Which door? Hmm... I, I feel bad. Right? Because, you know, June already had such a horrible reaction to it. But if I am, if I am suspicious of her, it, it would, like, you know, if, if I, the player, not Junpei, want to keep an eye on her, why not mess around with the bad options first, you know? Follow your heart. I'm gonna follow my heart. Let's 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 push our luck. Let's let's go with our lucky number five. Goku. Hey, wait. Junpei's cry echoes across the room. The four people walking toward the door stopped and turned back toward him. I want to go through door five too. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when June spoke up. What? What are you saying, Jumpy? You're going through that door, then I'm going with you. He turned around to look at her. No, you can't. I, I can't take you with me. Why? 
We're... Well, you know what's in there, don't you? Are you sure you want to see that? Well... June opened her mouth, as if to say something, but instead closed it again and looked at the floor. Junpei felt an ache in his chest at her clear distress, but... The choice was not his to make. There was nothing else he could do. Junpei turned away from June, doing his best to silence his turbulent emotions. Please, let me go into door five. Seven scratched his head and looked at the young man. Man, now we're right back where we started, you know that? Junpei's bracelet is number five, right? If we are going to add Junpei, then we must subtract five from the rest of us. Snake turned to Ace. Ace, please, take good care of Clover. One and four. Oh, all right. That's, that's fine. One plus four equals five. Don't go away! You need to listen to me, Clover. <gasps> hey, Kikanib! Thank you for the raid! Welcome on in, everybody! How was your stream? Welcome, welcome! My name is Katie Dits, but you can call me Katie. And right now, I'm playing 999 for the first time, which really quick, if y'all aren't familiar, it's a very mature game. It's got, it's got some really graphic descriptions of blood and gore and stuff. Uh, these folks are trapped on a ship and someone just exploded. So hey, if you want to stick around, make sure you, you know, you're comfy with that sort of thing. And check out Escalation Point CW to see a full list. Otherwise, welcome on in! Let me see. I think I can do the command for a shout out. Everyone, silence. Silence as I shout out. Turn everything off. Now. There we go. Thank you again for the raid! Now back to the suspense. Go to door four with the others. No! Don't be so selfish. Snake's tone was harsh. Tears welled up in Clover's eyes. She bit her lip and did her best to fight them off. Snake's expression softened, and he put his arms around Clover. He held her close and whispered into her ear, You'll be fine. Just relax. It took- it looked as though he whispered two or three more words, but whatever they were, Junpei didn't hear them. Huh. What did he tell her? He couldn't help but wonder what the other man had said. Snake pulled back from his sister, his eyes kind and inquiring. Okay, I understand. Her voice was barely audible from where Junpei stood. Hmm. Before long, new teams were assembled. Let's make sure we've got this straight. Those going to door five are... Me, Seven, and Snake. Just the three of them. Seven plus two plus five equals fourteen. And the digital root of fourteen, one plus four, is five. And those going to door four are... Lotus, Santa, June, Ace, and Clover. Okay. Eight plus three plus six plus one plus four is twenty-two. And the digital root of twenty-two is two plus two, four. We're okay with this. No problems here. Yes. Let's do it. All right, then. Here we go. Seven, Snake, and Junpei scanned their numbered bracelets in quick succession. The screen of the red showed three asterisks. The lever's all that's left. Okay. All right, then. Let's go. Junpei glanced around one last time, his hand resting on the lever of the red. Okay. Please be careful. You know, for some reason, I thought that by choosing door five, we would somehow make math work to bring June also with us. So I won't get to keep an eye on June this time. But you know what? My original goal is still, I think, secured. So thumbs up. Concern was written plainly across her face. We will. 
Junpei looked her in the eye and gave what he hoped was a reassuring nod. He pulled the lever. Here we go again to see the muck up crab. With the sharp clack of the lock releasing, the door swung open. And it's open. Watch out, here comes yucky text. Ahead of them in the small hallway were the pitiful remains of the ninth man. Oh. That's messed up. That... that was the ninth man. For a moment, Junpei froze. Try as he might, his eyes would not leave the corpse, and his feet would not leave the floor. Seven, too, seemed paralyzed. Seven, on the other hand, seemed unconcerned. He walked calmly down the bloody hallway and only stopped when he realized his companions were not following. Oh, how can you... Well, do you intend to kill me? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? He hadn't even bothered to turn around. His head was, at most, slightly cocked towards one shoulder. Uh, sorry. Let's go! Junpei and Seven looked at one another, nodded, and threw themselves through the door. As they did, a cold tone sounded from the left wrists of all three men. Oh. Oh, it's a, it's a skeleton! Seven and Junpei looked down at their bracelets. On both of them, and on snakes, a red skull had flickered to life. Damn it! The countdown started! They had scarcely processed this information when... Our fates are sealed! With a metallic slam, the numbered door behind them swung shut. Shit! The door! There's no turning back now. And if we don't manage to find the deactivation device... Hey, where is the dead? The fear and urgency in Seven's face reflected what all three of them felt. How the hell should I know? Stay calm. Look around you. Okay, okay, uh, I get it. Junpei spun around, searching desperately for the dead. Ah! Oh. He found it easily enough. It was on the wall, next to the closed door labeled 5. Found it! Right here! As he yelled, he struck the scanner with his hand. The other two scrambled to follow suit. We're saved! As soon as they finished, Snake threw the lever down. Uh, uh. Did I call Snake 7? Ah, uh, ain't that just the way. Doesn't help <sighs> that they're all S names. <sighs> what, we, what do we have? Snake, Seven, Santa... Anybody, any other S names I should know about? Whew. Oh. Well, it looks like it stopped. As he spoke, Junpei wiped the sweat from his forehead with a trembling hand. Goddamn thing's gonna give me a heart attack. A muscle stood out in Seven's neck, and the corners of his mouth were twitching. Jumpy, are you alright? Are you guys okay? They could hear anxious voices, muffled but distinct, from the other side of the door. Yeah, we're fine. The detonators have been deactivated. They heard relieved sighs, and even through the door, the three men could feel the tension disperse. All right, we're moving on. Be careful, okay? Okay. Sure thing. There they go. And we're alone. And they're gone. They heard footsteps moving away, and before long they were alone again. Now. Junpei looked around. Doesn't look like we can go any further this way. Okay. The hallway ended roughly 20 or 30 feet from where they stood. Maybe this wall can be moved. Or not. <sighs> it's not budging. Thank you for trying, though. Hey, there's a door over there. To the left, however, was a wooden door that looked positively inviting by comparison. First class. In the middle of it was a plaque that read first class. A first class cabin, huh? Hmm. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to add... I want to add to my notes really quick. So, I'm assuming as part of the second hour... Um, where did I start writing down the hour timeline? Here we go. I'm assuming this is, like, leading into second like, hour, right? And so... 
you choose store. And then I'm going to note uh, the fifth one is a first class cabin. I'm assuming like when I peeped at the at the flow chart that this is probably like the first big branch, right? So we'll find out what's behind four later. What what our original course was. With how long time progresses. Yeah. All right. Well, it seems like it. Let's have a look then, shall we? All right then, let's go. Yeah. Without hesitation, Snake opened the door and stepped inside. Seven followed closely behind him. Junpei moved to follow them as well, but... Oh. Arr. He stopped, just short of the threshold, and looked back, not knowing why. I don't want to look, but... Look, you better! That's why we're here, Buster! Lying in the small hallway was a man's body, or at least what was left of it. He tried hard to avoid looking at the grisly scene, but it just wouldn't leave his mind. Oh, it's so horrible. I, I can't even tell what's what. What had once been a man's internal organs now looked like so much vomit. We're getting back into yucky tax territory. Look out! As though something had chewed up, had chewed up and spit out the better part of his torso. It was hideous, but worse still, it was cruel. It was hard to believe the thing on the floor had once been human. The black pool of thick blood. The lumps of glistening flesh spread across the floor. The awkward, twisted tangle of shredded intestines. The head wrenched to some grotesque, unnatural position. He'd there it is! Wearing these. The man's glasses lay next to his head. The lenses were cracked, and the frame bent and distorted. And next to the glasses lay a bracelet, the number 9 still displayed on its face. It still works! Somehow! The bracelet's off. Oh wait, Zero did say... Lastly, Lamp discusses how to remove the bracelets. Yeah, strong glasses too. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, for the heartbeat, which is zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, or the backside of the Mary's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. The bracelet comes off when you're dead. Yeah? Oh, but what the hell's the point of getting it off when you end up like this? Oh, oh just imagining how it must have happened. This was a human. Yeah, like, now that you pointed it out, yeah, it is crazy how the most these were damaged after an explosion that did all of that descriptive text to a body, and only and it's only like a couple cracks and bent, bent frames. <sighs> Suddenly, Junpei felt his stomach convulse, and a knot of muscle gripped his throat. Oh god, oh, uh, I feel like I'm gonna puke. Oh, oh, I gotta get out of here. He clapped his hands over his mouth and ran to the first class cabin. Go back! You didn't pick up the bracelet! <sighs> the atmosphere changed immediately. The room was gorgeous, and despite the apparent age of the ship, none the worse for wear. Huh, where did they... He looked around. Seven and Snake were nowhere to be seen. There were two doors on the right side of the room. He opened one on his right and went through. Through here? On the other side of the door was a short hallway. He jogged down the hallway, opened the door at the other end, and peeked through. There they are. There they were, to his right, busy examining something. Ooh. Hmm... What's up? He stepped through the door and walked toward them. Check this out. We found this thing here on the door. The red light's on. Does that mean it's locked? 
So I would assume. Is there any other way out? We looked around a little. Other than this door, we didn't find anything. So you're telling me that unless we can open this door? Yes. We won't be going anywhere. Junpei stepped away from the door and looked around the room. This looks like a bedroom. Then the other room is probably a living room. Or the closest you can get to one on a ship. Hmm. Alright, let's find a way to open this door. Come on, guys! Are we going to do it? Are we doing it? Oh, we're doing it, chat. Let's go! Seek a gay trout! Yay! Alright, so... Alright, so the room that they are in right now is this bedroom. It has a piano. Um, <laughs> is it bad that, like, because I play so much Happy Home Designer, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a piano. That's like a vanity. Uh, da da do. <laughs> um, okay. And then I guess these are like closets in the middle southern rooms, the two rooms. There's a toilet and a separate bathroom. Uh,. And the living room. Okay. What should I do first? Uh. Let's do the bed. Ooh. Score plate. A. Oh man, it's been way too long since I read music. But if I remember uh, my musical note correctly in terms of just like what each space is oh god I'm turning this way not the way I want to oh um but the lines are every good boy does fine and then the spaces are F A C E face so up top assuming that it's just baseline right this would be an A in the first one and then, I guess, actually, I guess these are all A's. Which, you know what? I could have probably inferred that from the, from the fact that this is called A plate. <laughs> it took Junpei by surprise. Snake, usually so calm and collected, suddenly began to move. Mm. He stared about the room almost frantically, clearly looking for something. No, Junpei thought, not staring. After all, he's blind. Blind or not, Snake was clearly attempting to do something. At last, Junpei could no longer contain his curiosity. What's wrong? You got weird all of a sudden. Snake waited a moment before answering. I heard something... strange. Strange? Something strange? Ah, oh, well. Never mind. It doesn't seem to be anything suspicious. I don't wish to toot my own horn. But my auditory senses are considerably more advanced than those of most humans. Ah, uh, this, this sort of thing, huh? I notice even the slightest of noises. Right. Are you going to tell me you can hear a needle drop from a mile away? <laughs> no. Such a thing would be impossible. However, by listening to the sound of footsteps and breathing, as well as sound echoing off the environment, I can locate most objects. <laughs> Ushikoshi loves his pseudoscience. I, I can tell I'm in for a wild ride. Oh yeah, that's right. My when Clover God. fell on the big staircase a little while ago, you were at her side immediately. Thank you for the follow, and enjoy your stay. So that was, hmm. Yes, I could hear it happening. In fact, I can run quite fast. Certainly as fast as you. And should someone attempt to start a fight with me, I am quite confident that I could defeat them. I can't wait until you... Like, he's gotta kick someone's ass now, right? It's like Chekhov's gun. We know this... We know this This dude can kick ass. We got to see it. Oh, really? Junpei was somewhat taken aback by this revelation. He stared at Snake, skeptical. You don't believe me, do you? Care to give it a try? I must warn you, you'll no doubt regret it. Uh... Well, hey. I suppose that's enough playing around. Let's resume our search, shall we? 
With a small, self-satisfied smile, Snake turned and walked away from Junpei. I just wonder what he heard. I just want to actually see what this is. So this is the locking thing. It's flashing red. That's usually not a good sign. Is that a microphone? It looks like a satellite dish. Let me see. Hmm. Well, judging by the feel of it, I would guess that we are meant to produce some sort of sound with the piano. And this device will sense it and unlock. So I have to figure out what, what's, what song could it be? Hmm. A white desk. Feels kind of fancy. It's a small round chair. Looks like it probably goes to the vanity. Speaking of, let me see. Here's the vanity. It's totally a table with a mirror. Ah, yes, you know, that sort of thing is known as a vanity. Were you aware of that, Junpei? Of course, vanity also refers to self-love, conceit, and narcissism. <laughs> As such, you could say that every day, when a woman looks into one of these, she is staring at her own conceit and narcissism. Doesn't that strike you as terribly sad? What I'm trying to say is my sister t cares too much about fashion. <laughs> Do you think she would be the type, like, to be like, ooh, um, let me finish that thought, to be like, you know, on the latest trends? She strikes me as a fashionista. What's this? This isn't a score. Is this a map of the ship? A map? There's a map of the ship here? Yeah. Then I imagine it will prove very helpful. You'd best hold on to it, Junpei. Okay. Welcome back with new spoon. I'm sorry, your coffee, your spoon. It is now possible to use the map screen. Hooray, map screen. The map screen can only be viewed during the story sections. While on the map screen, you can examine a map of the ship's floor plan, which you will acquire over the course of the story. Clicking the green parts of the floor plan will allow you to see a bird's eye view uh, for that room. Okay. So... Wait. Not now then. I might have been- I might have gotten confused on what that actually meant. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be honest. A music stand. Well, might as well put this glass plate on it. Oh, hmm. Is something wrong? It's kinda hard to see the notes. Maybe if I put something under them? Hmm. A background for the notes. Okay. A piano keyboard. What is Snake doing? He can't play, can he? This piano, there's something amiss with the keys. You mean it's out of tune or something? No, no, not that. It's properly tuned, just... Well, the sounds are clearly purposefully different. The C key doesn't yield a C, but rather a different note entirely. The same goes for the D keys. They play some other note. Huh, why do you think it's like that? Isn't it painfully obvious? Zero modified it in some way. This piano, you see, is part of one of the puzzles Zero has set for us. Perhaps if we play the keys in the correct order, something will happen. In other words, we need to play a song on the piano. I believe so. Hmm. Will it play, will it play those notes again? These keys are all messed up. Oh yeah, that's right. I got that score played earlier. Hmm. No. Sometimes, I remember a long time ago, I, I, when I did do more music, um, when I did more music, what, I, what I would do is, like, occasionally people would ask me to do notes if I happen to very strongly know it, and I, like, people, my, I think, like, my music teacher thought I had perfect pitch, but I'm just weirdly specific about certain notes. But, like, when I heard those two notes, it was like, doo doo. And I'm like, that sounds familiar, and I don't know why. Just for cutscenes, hmm. What's in this one again? The bathtub room. Uh, anything going on with the sink? Well, the sink's clean. 
Any water? Nothing's coming out. We've got the faucet on all the way, but I can't hear anything. But there's water in the tub. The bathtub is full of water. Yucky water. Is there ash or something in this water? It looks kinda gray. Let's just pull the plug. No, hold on. Maybe we can, I don't know, use it for something? Use it for something? Okay, well, we're not gonna mess with that right now. The lights, huh? Nope, doesn't look like there's anything hidden there. Testing, testing. Hey, it's great to see you all here. I just flew in from New York and boy are my arms tired. Hey, Seven, the comedian. Yes, thank you, I'll be here all week. Try the veal. That's not a mic, Seven. It's just a shower head. What? What the hell? <laughs> Seven's funny. What's this? It's a light switch. Nothing happens when I press it. And this room? What is this? It's a heavy piece of paper that's been folded in half. It has score printed on the front of it. Score. That's gotta be musical score. If that's true, then the score we just found was probably in here. At least at some point. It says score. I guess you'd put sheet music in it. Hmm. Sorry, I thought I would be able to pick it up, but I guess not. Oh! Hey, there's, um... Well, that's gonna be some really hot glass. There's an iron gate in front of the fireplace. There's something behind it. I think I know what we have to use the... the water for, everyone. Let's look at the couch. This couch looks just big enough for three people. Looks perfect for me! What? Perfect for an elegant gentleman like myself. The couch looks a lot more elegant. Hey, there's something you aren't saying. Uh, never mind. Uh. <laughs> Romantic date with Seven and Snake. Boys night! We night! There's an expensive looking chair sitting over there. Really quick, can I look at the map? I'm in here. Where did we enter from? Uh, like, is there a way I can go back out into the hallway? So that does that. Oh yeah, this is a little storage room. Oh, score plate, G. These are all in the G. This is a suitcase made of leather, the color of rich mahogany. I'll shoot. <sighs> Adjusting in my chair. Looks like there's nothing in it. And this one? It's a leather suitcase. Dang, nothing in there. Uh, just this one? Nothing in there anymore. All right. I get it. You're gonna use this vase, right? That's pretty clever, Junpei. We just gotta fill this thing with water. Anything in the vase? Looks like a vase. Maybe you could use that. Anything on the bottom? Rotate a vase in your mind. Mm. Oh, hydrate and stretch. Good call. Everybody stretch. Everybody drink water. Also, I hope y'all are having a good night chat. Make sure y'all are fed, cozy, comfy. This is some sort of antique desk. Makes sense though, I guess. The whole room's full of antiques. You could get a nice handful of cash for all the stuff in here. Hmm. Somebody spent a lot of time carving the legs on this chair. I, it'll snap like a twig if seven sits on it though. Mind your own business! Think too loud. Hey Junpei, where are you going? Didn't we come out of that door? No point in going back there. All that's out there are a locked number door and a dead body, or what's left of it. So that's the one. Yeah. Okay. I'm just checking around. It's this one, right? And this is the toilet, but we don't want to look at the toilet right this second. The bathtub's full of gross, cloudy water. Alright. Shouldn't be too hard to fill this vase up. 
these filled with water. Sorry I keep flipping back and forth. I'm just a silly goober. I'm keeping you on your toes. I've got a vase filled with water. It's heavy. I can't just throw it at the grate, though. I gotta pour the water right under the flame itself. So do I have to put this down? Am I just lugging around a, a thing until I figure out how to how to lift how to lift something off of, of uh, how to lift this grate off? It's a toilet. Doesn't seem to be anything in the toilet or the tank. What if we put the water in it? Nothing strange going on here. There's some toilet paper on the wall there. Nothing that looks suspicious. Damn. No, I want to do the. I want nothing suspicious here. I think I clicked on that on accident, and now I'm suspicious. Junpei, look. There's a hand coming out of the toilet. Just a joke, there, kid. Not funny, man. I'm too old for this shit. Incontinence is a problem many older men struggle with, but there's help. A clean bathroom. There's nothing in the toilet bowl or the tank. That was fun. <laughs> what is it? There's like there's like a, um, a toilet ghost, right? In 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 some folklore. I feel like it also exists in Zelda where it's just a hand that comes out of the toilet. I don't know what it's called. Um, oh yeah, I wonder... Could I combine these for any revelations? No. Okay. Let me think about this. An antique vanity. There's nothing in the drawer. Yep, totally empty. A bed. Anything under the bed? A bed with a canopy. I've seen things like this in movies and stuff, but never in real life. True, you don't see too many these days. I can't see the details, obviously, but I imagine it's one of those princess beds Clover is so fond of. Clover wants one of these? Yes, she wants a princess bed. Didn't I say that? You think it doesn't suit her? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. Ah, uh, Junpei, judge her by appearances, will you? And well, you should not. Sorry. The canopy. Man, this makes me miss my own bed and sleep. Oh, just a sleepy guy. Light desk. Feels kind of fancy. Is there anything I missed? The lights? Well, at least we've got light. What? Uh-huh. What the hell, man? It's... it's just a light. Uh, oh, of, of course. Huh? Why... Why did Snake freak out? The lights are on. Hmm. Oh, here's another thing. Okay. I was like, I know I haven't been in all these doors. A leather suitcase. There's nothing inside. I can tell by the weight and it makes no noise when shaken. Oh, come on. It's a leather suitcase. Unfortunately, there's nothing inside. Eh, nothing for me. Oh, but look! We got the C's now. And a safe. The safe is locked. It's one of those dial locks. It doesn't have a key. We just need to get the dials in the right place and it'll open. Did you find anything, Seven? Nope. How about you, Snake? I also found nothing. Hmm. Safe with a dialogue on it. We won't be able to open it until we know the right numbers. There's nothing left in there. And I already clicked on the suitcases. Is there anything on the floor? No. Hmm. What am I missing? The lights are lit. I can't see the notes very well with the glass being so transparent. What do I need to do? Because my thought would be... Hmm. Anything with the sink still? Water's not working. And there we are in the mirror. What a pair. A college kid and a terrifying giant of a man in a beanie. Stuck in a cramped bathroom. 
with this beast of a man. What would my parents say? What does that mean? Junpei? Hello? Junpei! What are you talking about? Hmm? Something wrong, Junpei? You looked real sad all of a sudden. Junpei! <laughs> Junpei! Uh, no, nothing. Junpei. You need, you, you need to do some reflection, bud. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Anything else with the mirror? Um, you already tried the sink, and the bathtub probably shouldn't try continuously refilling it. How about this? It says score. Like, I wish I could interact, like, use the item on it. Have, have a thought about it, perhaps. Anything in this room that I missed, specifically? I guess there's these lamps. There are a couple of lights up on the wall. And then there's the table. There's lots of vase on this table. I'm trying to think. According to his English VA, Junpei is bisexual based on a very specific voice direction he was given, so this is truly him being gay and homophobic. Oh, Junpei. Hope you figure it out, bud. An old fashioned desk. Adds a little class to the room. The ninth man's body is on the other side of that door. Maybe I don't want to go out there after all. There's a cover for a musical score sitting on the table. I think there's something in the back of the fireplace behind the fire. Right on, buddy. Do it. Do what? Come on, it's not hard to figure out. You seriously? Throw that shit on there. Okay, I'll take this out now. What? Alright, time to put this fire out. Oh, I had to just select the fire. Adventure moment. Alright, buddy, let's do it. Here we go. Haha, good job. Another success. That fire didn't stand a chance. Can I reach back there? All right, I'll just pull this out now. Burn my hands to a crisp. Don't want to get burned, so let's pull down the sleeve. Okay, good. Phew. Score plate. All right. Can we combine this yet? Not yet. Let's go to the piano. As Junpei tucked the plate into his pocket. Oh, oh no. Uh, wait, oh no. Seven cried out and stumbled, his balance lost. He threw out a hand and cut the wall in time to steady himself and avoid the floor, but his face was flushed and he looked startled. Hey, Seven, what the hell was that? Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I just felt a little dizzy. That's Trix! All. Hi, Trix! How are you? Welcome on into the stream! For folks who are new, my name is Katie Ditz, but you can call me Katie. I'm currently playing 999 for the first time. So hey, if you've never heard of this game, make sure you check out the CWs. It gets really graphic at times. We've literally just had a guy explode. It's not fun. So hey, welcome on in. How are you doing? Uh, hang on. It's going to go quiet for a second. But I'm going to give you a shout out. Real pup. There we go. There you go, everybody. Every follow Trex. Trex is really cool. Seriously, I hope you had a wonderful stream today. Thank you for the raid. Currently, we're having boys night in door number five with the boys and figure out what the heck's going on on this ship. Let's see what. Let's see. Let's see what's troubling Seven. Seven rubbed a couple of fingers across his brow, and then shook his head as if to clear it. I'm an ad hell, but I hope you're having fun. 999 is one of my favorite games. Trix! Trix! Trix, 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 Trix! Just like shouting, just like shouting into the void as, as, as Trex like exits the ad hell. Trix, I'm enjoying it so much! I can't wait to play more of it in the next time we stream this, because I know I have to end soonish, but not yet. Ah! 
yeah. Welcome. Uh, yay, you're out. You're free. You're free. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just figuring out why Seven has a uh, has a big old headache. What's going on, Seven? What the hell is wrong with me? There's memory loss now. I'm getting dizzy for no reason. M wait, memory loss? Hey, bud, you didn't mention that. <sighs> memory loss? Hang on. For folks coming in, uh, I've been- I have an actual, like, physical notebook. Cause taking- taking notes, like, with pen and paper helps me remember stuff a bit more. So I've just been like, okay, okay, let me just- let me- let me just- let me just- <sighs> So, next to seven, I'm gonna write amnesia. Critical character detail. There we go. Junpei couldn't hide the surprise in his voice. Seven, for his part, seemed unconcerned. Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. Dang, y'all really got grouped up before I made the scene. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. Didn't realize I hadn't told you. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're talking about amnesia, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, why are you an amnesiac? What happened <laughs> to you? Oh yeah? You're, you, you have amnesia? Prove it. How'd you get amnesia? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> if I knew that, I wouldn't really be one, would I? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess that's true. Junpei, you goober. Junpei paused for a moment and stared at Seven. Are you telling the truth? Huh? Huh? Well, you look pretty calm for somebody who doesn't remember anything. If you've really got amnesia, shouldn't you be, like, upset or confused or something? Oh, yeah? You have amnesia? List five of their songs. Well, sure. I mean, I was pretty confused when I woke up down on D-Deck. But that was a while ago. I've had some time to get used to it. After a while, I figured it wasn't worth the trouble of worrying about it. After all, why worry about something I can't change? Well, people usually don't stay amnesiacs forever. Huh. Boys are always walking up and down on T-Deck. I figure it'll work itself out eventually. But that's... that's it? That's it. Uh, or... All right, that's enough talking for now. Let's get back to work. Seven gave Junpei a look the younger man wasn't sure how to interpret and turned to walk away. How are you fine with something like that? Somehow, though, Junpei didn't find his reassurances very reassuring. Dang, Seven. What's your so What's your story, Seven? We, we got to we got to figure you out. But for now, I think we're good to start putting our puzzle pieces together. Oop. A music stand. Might as well put the music I found on it. I'll put the ceramic plate on the bottom and the glass plates on top. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Well, I put them all on top of each other, but they look odd. It doesn't really look like a song. Hmm. Then in all likelihood, we haven't found them all. We need to find more glass plates. Okay, so we're not gonna just deposit them really quick. Hmm. Where have I not checked? Bed. Any other parts of the piano? An upright piano. From the feel of the wood, it must be quite old. Can we look in the piano? Sure, don't see pianos like this much nowadays. Can't lift the lid. Yeah, so currently we have this ceramic plate that's gonna be like a base, and then all of these other plates we found are glass, so that you'll be able to read them with the ceramic plate under them, but it looks like we're missing maybe, I imagine like one or two more at most. Hmm. Antique vanity, nothing in the drawer. Yep, totally empty. Nothing in the mirror either. Um, 
I keep thinking these wall ornaments are like shelves. Small round chair, looks like it probably goes to the vanity. Oh, wow, this fabric feels great. I bet that chair is really comfortable. Oh, well that's nice. I'm like looking at it and it makes me think of like, we also have a stool uh, where we can like prop our feet up, but it's also like, you know, a container so you can store stuff in it. And I'm like, that has to be a container. Let me lift the lid off of that. But no, it's just a cushion. But no, it's just a cushion. It's a small round chair. The string, maybe? The pillows? There's nothing under the pillow. Where haven't I looked? We still don't know the code for the safe. Double checking the suitcases. Double checking the drawers. Dial. Checking around. Now I'm at the point where I'm click- Oh man, I'm clicking. Sorry, I couldn't tell if, if like- There was like a part of the shelf that looked red when I closed it. So I was like, hello? Light switch. Um, oh yeah, we can unplug this now. Right. All right, why don't we just drain this water? Yeah, good plan. I forgot that now we don't need the water anymore. All right, where's that thing? A good tug ought to be enough to get it out. Huh? Oh, there's the plate. Okay, it was in the tub. D. Let's see if this is what we needed. Uh, da da da. Let's see, just gotta put the ceramic plate on the bottom and then stack the glass plates on top of it. All right, good. Sweet, yay! Okay, we found them. That thing must be disgusting. Oh yeah, you're right. Ugh, and you can't even wash your hands because there's no like running clean water. Sweet, now I can play the music. Junpei, would you be so kind as to play the piano? I am unable to, you see. I'm sure I needn't tell you, but the keys on this piano are not what you might expect them to be. C won't be C, D won't be D, and so forth. Huh? You must listen carefully to determine which keys to strike. Do you understand? Yeah. All right, let's give this a shot. Oh man, okay. Uh, okay, it's time for me to rely upon my ears. Hopefully this won't go too terribly. So first I have to figure out, if I can figure out what F is, maybe I'll be able to work, because C will also be lower. Nope. It's not any of these, right? Oh, they just make that noise. Hang on, I forgot which one is my note. That one. Well, now I know what this is. This is that. Is this the school theme? Like when, like when school lets out? Dun, 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 dun. Or something like that. Hmm. Oh, they're right next to each other. Oh. Ah, damn it. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's like I can read, I can kind of read piano music, but if you ask me to actually play the piano, I'm, I'm screwed. Oh. 
There we go. I did it. And we're done. Music is not my forte. Wait, what was that noise? <gasps> Junpei! We did it! Looks like it worked. I heard something unlock over by the exit. Let's go! Good plan. Stand! Bow! Be seated! Well, I guess he hasn't forgotten that. Cute! Teacher! Teacher 7! At least Snake thinks it's funny. <laughs> yes, I suppose that's that was the classroom bell, wasn't it? I don't imagine that's what Zero was thinking of, however. No, no, Zero almost certainly meant to suggest... Westminster? Not middle school. Westminster? The palace in London that plays host to these days to the House of Parliament. You've heard of Big Ben, the famous clock tower, yes? Big Ben plays that very collection of notes on the hour. London. The capital of England, huh? <laughs> it's like how it's I don't I don't know what it's called, but I saw I saw Jordan watching or either Jordan or his mom watching like a compilation of of like people in, in like English soap operas being like and, and so I'm going to London and and like every time someone reacts instantly like London <laughs> London <laughs> At any rate, the door is now unlocked. Let's leave this place immediately. Okay, but I want- okay, but wait, but wait. I want to- this door goes to the living room. I don't have any reason to go out there. Wait! <laughs> oh, okay. All right, let's go. Maybe we'll have a chance. Maybe it's just we need to do the puzzle. You found it! We found the gate route! Hooray! Oh. He came out of the door and into a long, straight hallway. Another hallway? Hmm? He paused for a moment and turned around to look behind him. First class. That should do it. Seven was bent over, apparently doing something to the door. What's he up to? Junpei had spoken more or less to himself, but apparently Seven had heard him anyway. The larger man stood up and turned to Junpei. I was just putting one of those plates in there. Oh, like reusing the music plates? It ought to keep the door from locking again. Oh. Now we can come back here anytime we want, right? Ah, why would you want to come back here? Snake was a reasonable one. Seven thought about it for a moment before he answered. I might like to play a little piano. <laughs> if anything, if it were me, I would be like, I'm not going to take any chances. We could be, you know, like, what if we were being funneled into a trap and we couldn't go back because everything locked behind us, you know? Might as well give ourselves an exit. Piano? Come on, let's get moving. We aren't out of this yet. Without waiting for an answer, Seven started off down the hallway. Well, then? Snake shrugged, sighed, and quietly followed Seven. Hmm. Junpei. That's a lie, Junpei thought to himself. Can't say I could ever imagine Seven playing the piano. He couldn't use the piano in there anyway. The keyboard's a mess. But why would he want to leave the door unlocked, then? <sighs> I have no clue. Hey, wait for me! Junpei frowned, took one last look at the door, and then walked away toward his companions. No! After some time in the hallway, they emerged into a larger, more open area. Whoa, a, a metal grate? A large metal grate, like the door of a jail, divided it in half. Why is this thing... <laughs> They shook it for a while, but as they had expected, it did not move. Figures. Are those elevators over there? No way to know if they're working or not from here. Hmm. Oh, uh, there's a door just to the left of this grate. Oh? 
Unfortunately, however, it was locked and refused to open. Sounds like it's locked. Yep. Junpei took a moment to examine the left side of Stairs the room. Stairs leading down. Stairs. They're blocked by the grate, though. Hmm. But this here seems accessible. So we can open it? Nah, uh, I think it's locked, too. Look. Is that Venus? In the center of the door was a small keyhole. Next to the keyhole, a small symbol had been carved into the metal. What's this mark? The female symbol. He wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Snake, naturally, was somewhat more sure. Ah, the Venus symbol, I imagine. I know my symbols! I know my symbols! Do you recall the similar symbols near the large central stairway? They reference many of the solar bodies. Oh, th that's right. The sun, Saturn, and Earth. So as you can see, that one is likely not the woman symbol, but a Venus symbol. Mm-hmm. So I assume. Hmm. Hold on, where's seven? Yeah, where'd seven go? While they had been discussing the symbols, Junpei now realized Seven had slipped away. His absence now felt, Snake and Junpei turned ah, to look he for- is. down that hallway. Oh, never mind, they found him. Seven had left them to head down the hallway, extending to the right of the stairs. This way, Snake. Follow me. Junpei grabbed Snake to lead him in the right direction, and they both headed off after Snake. Before long, the three of them stood in front of a door. Hmm. I wonder if this door will... It was a French door. How about that? It opens. Oh. Junpei tested the door and realized that, unlike so many others that they'd encountered, it was unlocked. Almost as though he was afraid it would suddenly lock itself, Junpei threw the door open. I like the, the sparkles on the door, the little star symbols. He stepped inside. Ooh, a bar, a game room, oh, sluts! Wow. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Junpei, do you love gambling? It took only a moment for Junpei to take in his new surroundings. Is this some kind of casino? Sure looks like one. Before Junpei could comment further, a noise from behind him made him turn around. Aw, oh, you got locked in! Snake was shaking the door they'd just come through. Well, this is troubling. As Seven and Junpei watched, he threw up his hands in frustration and then kicked the door for good measure. It seems we are once again locked in. There was no reason to panic, however. Even if that door was open, it's not like we had anywhere to go that way. So we must find another exit, then. All right, guys, let's split up and search this room. Come on, no dawdling, let's go. Quickly now. Let's do it. Spurred to action by Seven's words, Junpei and Snake began to examine the room. Uh, seek a way out. Oh man. Oh, the bangers. Oh, this sound. This song sounds really good already. Oh no. I was thinking about if I wanted to pause here or not because in about an hour or so, I'm going to have I'm going to have prior engagements and I don't know if I want to get my fingers all over this puzzle if I have to go so soon. Oh, the way that sounds is so good. Ah! Hmm. I think <sighs> Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I should probably stop here, I think. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and save. And then I'm thinking we're just going to jump right into this tomorrow. Like, same time, starting at 4 p.m. Ending around the same time, you know, because I have to also do this again tomorrow. Uh, but... I'm really excited to get this started. Uh, I want to. I want to do more puzzles. I want to see where this goes. We've already. We've already got so much intrigue going on, and like, we've technically not even entered our th 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 three proper. Like, we're still in like an hour and a half, right? Quote unquote, with how nebulous the time is. So, 
This is a good stopping point. Yeah! So let's go ahead and return to the tile screen. We're gonna be jamming out to this next time, I promise. And then, we're gonna get ready to say goodbye. We're gonna get ready to say goodbye. I'm gonna actually, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, I, I told y'all that at the beginning of the stream, I was gonna check and see if there's any fan art. So I'll get some music really quick and then we'll check and see if there's any fan art. And then we'll go ahead and get going. So let me, perfect, perfect. I think, did I do it in one? Maybe a little quieter, maybe just a touch quieter. Beep. There we go. All right, if you drew art or ever want to submit art, you can submit it on Twitter via the hashtag artsydits. I should also try to get that set up on Tumblr as well because I do have Tumblr. I also, I have, a, I got a blue sky too, um, but I have done nothing with it, so trucks. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and check the artsydits tag. Ah! Aw, <laughs> sorry, I think I saw some fan art that I actually hadn't seen before until now from April. Oh my god! Hang on, I have to figure out how to show this off. Because it's been a while. Let me see. Maybe I could do studio mode, and then go to gameplay, and then we'll do... Where are my little displays? Where are they? Where are they? Display! Display! Show me display number two. Show it to me now. Oop! Didn't mean to hit that key. Whoa. Okay, really quick. We have from Safran on Twitter. On the Twitter. A little bit of fan art. Been enjoying the streams while working lately. And look at this. Look at me. I'm so cute. I'm so cute. This is long overdue, but thank you so much for the fan art. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that I have a little surprise here waiting for me. It's so sweet. Thank you. And we're gonna head on back. That was awesome. I I had a really good time today with with uh, the Nonary Games with the 999. And I, you know what? I'm getting buckled in. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for more. We're gonna go. We're gonna go at it again tomorrow. But for now, I'm just trying to see who's live. Wait, how long is? Yes, I finally remember. Honey, ha, ha, my honey is live. My honey is live. Jordan is live. I'm going to. I'm going to send you to Jordan's stream. We're gonna raid Jordan. Hang on. Let's do raid phrase Uchi Koshi moment. And we are going to, we are going to put some emotes in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do double, I'm gonna do double Katie did cheer. Katie, Katie did hype rather. Get that set up. So I'm hyped to, I'm hyped to raid my, my husband and also our friend Jade. And they are currently playing, I almost said Final Fantasy. They're currently playing, they're currently playing Persona 5 Royale with cheese. With cheese. That's right. You wouldn't believe it. It's true. Sorry, I fumbled around so much with the emotes this time. I'm like the e the, the, the 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 chat box is attacking me. I'm trying so hard to copy it all. I'm like a I'm like a grandma. I'm like a grandma in a little in a little thing's body. But here is our raid phrase. I want to set it up. Raiding the real cozy boy. Jordan's streams are 18 plus, so if you somehow fell under the radar, what the heck are you doing? Get out of here! Go do something, go, go do something more wholesome with the weekend, huh? In the meantime, in the meantime, I'll see y'all tomorrow. And then after that, we should be having more regular streams. We should be having more VODs regularly uploaded. This should be uploaded sometime soon as well. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this one. I know I am. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, or whatever it is where you are, okay? Bye 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 bye. Wahoo! Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go read my husband. Let's go say hello. No. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No, 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 no.